Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2015 Class 2A sectional here at West Union. Alongside Dave Omdahl, I'm Darren Swenson for KDECradio.com's coverage of the Class 2A sectional. We're already underway here at 106 pounds. Jarrett Orr of Independence has a 2 to nothing lead and has William Miller of North Fayette Valley on his back right now. And also uh, over here on this uh, side of the mat, it's Luke Reichs of North Fayette Valley and Taylor Wolfcool of Independence. Uh, Coach Amdahl, uh, sectional Saturday, one of the most uh, fun Saturdays of the year. You bet. This is where it all comes down to. Uh, it's, either, it's either place first or second here or go home. But, uh, six teams. And... Uh, it was almost the same as our conference last week, except uh, Independence and North Fayette and came in. Minus uh, Waverly Showrock and uh, New Hampton. As uh, Wolf Cool here at 113 pounds gets the fall in a minute eight for Independence. He will move on to face Joe Kenoki, the top seed at 113 pounds. So Taylor Wolf Cool moving on. And the thing of it is, you lose these first round matches, uh, it's going to be a long wait for you to uh, wrestle again, and uh, you can't move on to districts. No, no, you're, you're pretty well done here. Uh, I guess you get a fifth and sixth place match at the end, but that's all you got to look forward to. Long, lonely afternoon yep. to get to wrestle again. Yep. And, there's no, and there's no wrestle back for third, so. Yep. And Jarrett Orr with an 8 nothing lead. He has William Miller uh, buried in Independence. Picks up another fall down there as Jarrett Orr of Independence who, who defeats William Miller of North Fayette Valley. So Orr will move on to face Michael Millage of Crestwood here at 106 pounds. We are up to uh, 120 pounds right now. This is an Independence Decorum matchup. Mitch Evans, a state qualifier for Independence at 29 and 7, taking on Colton Mickelson, only 1 and 0, oh, a junior for Decora. Yeah. He's uh, uh, replacing uh, Carter uh, Huff in the lineup. And uh, Mitch Evans has just pinned uh, Colton Mickelson with a uh, minute 33, about 30 seconds. So. So Independence, the favorite uh, going into this sectional, they're off to a rousing start. Uh, three this pins a, before 12.02, that's not too bad. This is a tough weight. Mitch even seated third with a 29-7 and seven record behind Brandon Mayer, Cresco, and Brennan Ryan of Owine, So, Okay, let's uh, review some of the matchups that we have had to this point. Uh, 106, Michael Millage of Crestwood is the first seed. He will take on Jarrett Orr of Independence, who wins by fall in a minute 51 over William Miller of North Fayette Valley. The three seed is Austin Parmley of Owine. The two seed is Philip Edy for Decorah. At 113, Joe Kenoki of Decora is the top seed. He will take on Taylor Wolfcool of Independence in the semifinals. Wolfcool with a uh, fall in a minute eight over uh, Luke Reichs of North Fayette Valley. And on the bottom side of the bracket, it's uh, Miles Ramsey of Austin, the three seed, and Ryan Steffen of Crestwood is the two seed. We got a uh, 120-pound matchup uh, going down on the other mat right now a 2-0 lead for uh, Kristen Hansmeyer of Wacom. He's leading Johnny Wander of, or w Wander, I'm sorry, uh, of North Fayette Valley, leading uh, Kristen Hansmeyer 2-0 uh, here at 120 pounds. The winner of this one will face Brandon Mayer, the top seed for Crestwood. And then at 126 on uh, this match, it's 0-0 zero -zero between Seth House of Independence and Jared Van Sickle of North Fayette Valley. So and the winner of that match will go on to face uh, top seed Devin Storch of the Cora next round. Devin Stortz, a top seed. Joe Kenoki getting a top seed as well for the Vikings uh, here today. Philip Eady sitting in a uh, two-seed position. Again, top two uh, wrestlers move on to the districts next week at Independence. And if you don't finish in the top two, you better hope you, your team gets uh, top two so you can wrestle again this season. Top two, of course, uh, team-wise, move on to the regional team duels, and that will take place on Tuesday night. One of the sites uh, here in this area will be at New Hampton for that. So, action fast and furious uh, here at the uh, sectional uh, wrestling meet in West Union. We're broadcasting from the floor and in the corner. Insert your own Darren and Dave joke there, but uh, nonetheless... Uh, We've got Independence here in on a shot there, but uh, blocked nicely by uh, North Fayette's uh, Jared Vansickle. Seth House, uh, young man with a 19, freshman with a 19 and 24 record. And Van Sickle, a senior with a 17, 14 record. And come back to the middle of the mat. Again, uh, that winner will face Devin Stortz. Uh, right now it's uh, Johnny Wander of uh, North Fayette uh, leading by a 2-0 margin on 
Kristen Hansmeyer, Wander was an Upper Iowa Conference champ for up for North Fayette last week. Hansmeyer able to break free and get the escape. He, it's now a uh, actually Wander a lead of three to nothing with a minute 28 left here in the second period. North Fayette dominating the uh, Upper Iowa Conference meet last week. Eight champions uh, in that uh, conference tournament, which was held right here in West Union. We have no score here at 126 going into the second period with uh, Seth House from Independence uh, covering on top. Uh, looks like uh, Van Sickle stood up just a little bit quickly, drew a caution. He's set House covers and uh, Van Sickle tries to stand up and turn in. House drops down to a leg. Got the leg picked up, head inside. Van Sickle is wizard, but uh, House still has the uh, legs. And uh, Van Sickle sprawls now. And uh, he sprawled and he gets his uh, one point escape near the edge of the mat. So uh, Jared Van Sickle, North Head Valley, leads 1-0 uh, over Seth Houghton Independence here at 126. And Johnny Wander with a 5-1 to one advantage uh, over on uh, the mat on the far end of the uh, gymnasium, leading Tristan Hansmeyer of Wacon. 5-1, to one, 30 seconds left here in the period. Uh, Decora with 13 wrestlers in the lineup uh, today. I just talked to Coach Adams a little bit beforehand. Uh, Isaiah Mitchell won't be wrestling at 138 due to some ringworm today. Okay, yeah, this, that fungal infection there, the, the skin really is just kind of a hassle <laughs> for wrestlers. The, oh, yeah. the uh, humid uh, conditions in the wrestling room and the like uh, really make them susceptible. Cleanliness, I know the coaches, they emphasize that and emphasize it and emphasize it, but sometimes it happens. A little Lamisil and they'll fix it right up. You bet. 5-1 lead for Johnny Wander on the far end. Matt on uh, Tristan Hansmeyer. They're about ready to end the second period and Wander will lead 5-1 heading to the third. And as we wind, we got 41 seconds left in the second period here at 126 and Jared Van Sickle just scored on a double leg against Seth House. After that escape to lead 3-0. Uh, House tries to switch, sits out. Uh, Van Sickle stays behind. No points yet. House breaks the arms, comes up. Van Sickle comes behind him, but uh, House breaks loose. Uh, let's make it three to one. That's 17 seconds left. House makes a shot at the edge of the mat. They go out of bounds. And yeah, as Darren said, we're right in a corner here at the uh, end of the gym. We don't have quite a good view as we had last, last week. But nonetheless, uh, we're watching wrestling. That's right. On sectional Saturday, where else would you rather be? Here's Hansmeyer getting a reversal and getting and Wander uh, on his back right now. So a five-point move for Hansmeyer here at the start of the third period. He is leading the Upper Iowa Conference uh, champ. Right now, the points mm. have not been awarded yet. He's, but he's coming out over the head, and he's got a minute left. One minute left uh, here in the period. Tristan Hansmeyer gets the fall on the Upper Iowa Conference champion Johnny Wander. So Hansmeyer will move on to face Brandon Mayer of Crestwood in the semifinals a little later on this afternoon. I'd say that's a minor upset that, right that there. Is, yeah, that is. Uh, he was seeded fifth, the fifth, fifth and fourth seed. So uh, in the fall. So Johnny Wander will wrestle for fifth here later on this afternoon. And on my match at 26, we've got uh, still 3-1. Uh, like Van Sickle, over House. Van Sickle on top. And we've got the other uh, 26 quarterfinal on the mat right now. This is Jake Kewins of O-Wine and Colin Cota of Wacon. Kewins a sophomore for O-Wine. Cota a junior for Wacon. And we've got House tried to hit a switch there, but uh, Van Sickle put his shoulder up in hard and blocked it. A minute three seconds left in the third period here at 126 between the fourth and fifth seed wrestlers. A takedown for Jake Kewins of Owine. He'll lead it uh, two to nothing on Colin Coda. The winner of that one will get Connor Slifka in the semifinals. Devin Storch for the Cora, Connor Slifka for Crestwood are the top two seeds here at 126. Score three two now as uh, House uh, escaped. Both on their feet. House in after a takedown. Uh, Van Sickle sprawls, recovers nicely, comes out to face him. Independence coaches over here, pretty wild in the corner. 
There's House in on a shot, but Van Sickle blocks it with underhook. And uh, down to 15 seconds on your mat there, David. Yep, Van Sickle's got the double underhooks on here. And the cow catcher blocking him. House trying to keep his feet moving, knees moving. Keeps moving in. Time's up though, and uh, with uh, Seth House on the attack, uh, Jared Van Sickle blocks it off, so Van Sickle will move on to take on Dara, Dara Devon Stortz from the core of the next round. And Seth House will wrestle later on in the fifth place matches, and those fifth place matches don't take place until the end of the day because we'll have the semifinals and then the first and the third place matches. And the reason they wait for the fifth place matches until the end of the day in case you have any third or to second place possible wrestlebacks uh, going on. Jake Hewins of Owine right now leading by a 4 nothing margin at 126 down uh, there. He leads uh, J Colin Cota of Owine. And in the format here is sectional wrestling. Why, if, if you finish third, but you haven't been beat by the champion, you uh, get a chance to wrestle that second place finisher for a true second because it's so important to uh, move on to the districts. So right now we have 132. We've got Chase Hershey from Old Wine, the number five seed against Mitchell Snicker from Wakan, the uh, four seed. Snicker, a ninth grader, 21 and 16. Hershey, a senior, 21 and 25. And Snitker has defeated Hershey the three times they've wrestled this year. Down on the opposite uh, mat, uh, Hewins has defeated Coda by fall twice this year. So when you face these conference opponents here in the postseason uh, in sectional wrestling, you get kids uh, awfully familiar with one another, David. Yeah, well, it, it, it sure helps determine the seating. Makes it a lot closer than the seating meetings. If you got somebody that uh, has consistently won, why they get seated ahead. Hewins now leading by a 6-0 margin, 112 left here in the second period. We've got uh, Hershey made a shot at the leg, now he's back up again. North Bay Valley hosting this sectional meet. I believe they hosted uh, sectionals a few years ago. Uh, Decora was in this sectional a few years back. Might have been five if I'm not mistaken. We've got a deep shot by deep shot by Snicker. Uh, he's got a head inside single. Got the head, got the leg in the air. Hershey's got a whiz. Hershey's wizard. Still up in the air. This place where Snicker trips Hershey backwards to the mat and uh, for two points. So it's 2 0. My Mitchell Snicker against Chase Hershey over Chase Hershey. Hewins leading 6 0 on Callan Coda. The other way down, and now Coda is on his back. Uh, Kewen's trying to turn him and tilt him in that situation. Bob Murphy, the official down, taking a look. Hasn't gotten it to the proper angle to back points yet. 29 seconds left here in the period. A 6-0 lead remains for Jay Kewen's, the sophomore from Owine. And Kewen's now getting back points against Dota. We've he has got, pinned him twice this year. We've got Snicker with the suicide cradle on Hershey. Hershey got his arm through and left his elbow alongside his head, which allowed Snicker just roll him right on through to his back. And he comes with three near fall points, so he's got a 5 nothing lead now over Chase Hershey. Hewins uh, still with the hold attached. He's got uh, three back points waiting for him here at the end of the period, and the second period will come to a close, and Jake Hewins will wind with a 9 to nothing lead, and I'd imagine the enthusiasm in the Owine room uh, pretty uh, high this week. Uh, they're having uh, their best day in quite some time at the Northeast Iowa Conference meet in uh, New Hampton last week. Yeah, having four champs, that, I think, set a school record for them, so that's got to make them feel good. Oh, yeah. Now Hershey tries an ankle pick on uh, Snicker. It's there. Now Snicker on the edge of the mat, comes around behind. Uh, Snicker gets two more, and he locked, promptly locked a cradle up. The end of the first period there, Snicker had the cradle on and, and Hershey popped the arm through and all he had to do was stick his arm out wide and, and base out and he probably uh, might have got a reversal and back points out of it, but he left the elbow laying beside the head and just, just got rolled right through. Hewitt uh, still leading 9-0 on Coda with a minute 35 left in the third period down there. Switch try here by Hershey on the bottom. And uh, he's coming around, it looks like he might get it. Her Snicker still hanging on to the leg. Snicker, they're out, head, out face to face now. Snicker's head uh, in, in between the legs of, uh, of uh, Chase Hershey. Hershey coming around. He's uh, got, his two, got his two. So score down 7 2. 
Mitchell Snicker over Chase Hershey. Hershey riding on top. Hershey out to the side, trying to tie up the arms in a barbed wire, and he does come over, but uh, Snicker bellies out. Hewins with three more back points on the other end. He leads Coda by a 12 to nothing margin. And there we got Hershey uh, up high, very high on uh, Mitchell Snicker with a with a uh, trying to bring a trying to use a barbed wire here or rib city as we call it in the Cora, and uh, it doesn't work, so he goes along behind. The cross face trying to turn it into a cradle. Snicker standing up now, so he gets his head and knee a little close together, but uh, he bellies out and breaks the cradle. Now we got a head in the side, attempted a cradle. 40 seconds left. Uh, Kewen still leading Coda in the quarterfinals at 126 on the far mat. Uh, Kewen's for a wide, Coda for walk on. Winner of that one will face Connor Slifka from Cresco. And here we uh, see uh, Hershey's been out to the side here, kind of high. Tried a three quarter Nelson, tried to cradle, but uh, Mitchell Sicker doing a pretty good job of blocking both, keeping his head up. And uh, start third period, and it looks like Mitchell Snicker's going to go down. Snitker has won all three matchups between those two wrestlers this year. Snitker's got hand control, comes up, uh, avoids a headlock there as he comes out to face Chase Hershey. Hershey in on a shot, got his head between the legs again. Got to come up, post and come up, and he has. Now he's uh, trying to control the ankle. Uh, Snitker's not quite down on his butt yet. And there it goes, uh, but he's reaching in, trying to lift in the crotch, which he does. But uh, in the scramble here, Cole Hershey, Chase Hershey comes up on top. Jake Hewins has finished a 14 and nothing major decision victory victory over Colin Coda of walk on on the far mat. So Hewins will move on to face Connor Slifka in the semifinals at 126. And coming up here at 132, it'll be Matthew Fullhart of Decor and Jordan Larson for North Fayette Valley. Larson was a North Bay, uh, was a conference champ uh, last week for. North Bay at Valley and Fullhart uh, ready to wrestle him for Decora. Larson also a state qualifier two years ago for the Tiger Hawks. We've got Chase Hershey up here with a power half on uh, Mitchell Snicker uh, doing everything he can to, to crank him over. Uh, got his, had his leg tied, left his leg tied up. I think he'd be better off if he'd let the leg go and went around the front after all he is behind, 8-4. Uh, time to take some chances here. Right now he's, he's uh, riding a little parallel. Now he moves up around the head. Uh, Still across the legs, got the arm in the armpit. Uh, trying to lift it as he does. Why Mitchell Snicker stands up, comes up to his feet. Good reaction. Snicker moves in, turns into him. They lock up. They lock up. Somebody's gonna get thrown here. And they come to the edge of the mat. And uh, goodness, Mitchell Snicker gets uh, two points off the off the edge. Yeah, both boys are off the edge of the mat. You know. Probably a more appropriate call would have been a one-point escape. If you, you, you know, the control was lost, but there, there wasn't any uh, establishment of control. Winner of uh, got, uh, off the end. Off the, the winner edge. of your match will face Drew Davis, the top seed from Independence. Davis was a Walmart Conference champ, and now on the far end, Jordan Larson has Matthew Fullhart on his back. 45 seconds left here in the first period. Larson with the leg in. Cross base. Now he's out chest to chest with Matthew Fullhart with 38 seconds left in the period, Dave. And my match is over with a 10 4 lead by Mitchell Snicker over Chase Hershey. And Jordan Larson just completed the fall on Matthew Fullhart. Larson wait for getting the fall in a minute 31 on Matthew Fullhart. Yeah, this is a pretty good uh, bracket here, too, because Jordan Larson, the conference champ, 12 3 record. Seated third behind Drew Davis, Independence, 22-13 and from uh, Indy, and uh, Chase Leinhard, 31 and 7 from uh, Crestwood. Yep. So we are already through the 132 uh, quarterfinals here today. And uh, I've got on my mat here Max Swartz, no record at all, the sophomore. Uh, from uh, Wacan against Tanner Erickson Dale from Independence 13 19. These boys are respectively the fifth and fourth seeds. And the loser of that one will get fifth place because it's five man bracket. Winner yep. of your match will face uh, Trey Pekanowski. The number one seed from Crestwood. And on the other mat right now, uh, Elliot Ryan of uh, Independence Leet and Cole Christopher. Wrestling one another at 145. Ryan from Independence, a 25 and 17 record. A junior, Cole Christopher, a junior at 14 and 16 for Decora. Should be a fairly even matchup, we hope. 
on this match. Ryan, with uh, more matches, I'd imagine he's probably been more the starter at that weight. Uh, Christopher really didn't establish himself as the starter uh, for a while yet this season. No, I guess this is actually Cole's first year out, so yeah. he's had a little catching up to do. Yeah. But, you know, you kind of like stories like that. I mean, Yeah, you do. You do. Kid taking a shot at wrestling uh, his junior year, and voila. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's one nice thing about wrestling. Uh, the kids pretty well decide who goes out on the mat. Very, very seldom does a coach pick one kid above another if he can't beat him in the room. Yep. So, kids make their own fortune. Here's Christopher in on a uh, shot with uh, El Elliot. Elliot able to get the hips back, stuff the head circle around to get the uh, takedown on Christopher. And now he cradles Christopher up with 35 seconds left here in the period. Ryan has uh, Christopher cradled up. He's on his back, and there's the fall. And Elliot Ryan with the fall in a minute 31 on Cole Christopher. He will move on to face Tyler Thomas of Crestwood in the semifinals this afternoon. And that's one of those things a beginning wrestler really has to learn, and that's a, to uh, hand control. Yep. You can't let those hands get locked up. Once you do, you're liable to go to your back. So a lot easier to prevent a cradle than it is to uh, get out of it. Oh, nice headlock over here by uh, Tanner Erickson Dale, but they go out of bounds. No score in your match with 17 seconds left in the uh, period. We're moving all the way up to 152 on uh, mat number uh, on the far mat. Gunnar Grandguard of Walk On and Neil Clement of Crestwood. And Grandguard with an early 2-0 uh, lead on the takedown. We had a little bad shot here by uh, Max Schwartz from Wakan. Uh, Tanner uh, Erickson-Dale tries to come around behind at the end of the match, or end of the period. And uh, Erickson-Dale will go down, score nothing, nothing. Start of the second. Grandguard won the only matchup between these two uh, wrestlers in the regular season by an 8-3 to three margin. In the, uh, or uh, I should say uh, it was the other way around. Clement won that matchup. But Grandguard with the 2-0 lead as a leg in. on your mat there, Dave. Yeah, here we had uh, a little scramble there at the edge of the mat. Uh, looks to me like he gave uh, a point to uh, Independence for uh, Wakan while maybe running out of a uh, Independence uh, started escape. down in the yeah, second period. That's right, that's right. Escape. Yep, that was got the escape there. Yeah, got the escape there in a scramble. Wakan tries for a headlock. Got it. Uh, head pops out as they go out of bounds. 2 nothing lead for... Uh, Gunnar Grandgard is in a stalemate call, call between him and Clement with 42.5 seconds left here in the second period, or the first period, I should say. We're still 1 0, and the pennants will that escape and uh, go off the edge of the mat. And we're still working in the center of the mat here. A year to year tie between uh, Erickson Dale and Schwartz. 33 oh. seconds left in the uh, period at 152. Gunnar Grandguard leading by a 2 to nothing margin. And now Clement gets the escape to make it 2-1 with 22 seconds left in the period. We're still still 1-0 here. Uh, we've got Bob Mur Murphy, the official. Actually, he's the only one I know at, uh, here today. Uh, officials are assigned by the state to the sectional, so some of them come quite a ways away. Uh, Bob Murphy, longtime athletic director, recently retired from uh, West Delaware. Next year, I understand he'll take over as the uh, secretary, executive secretary of the uh, Coaches Official Association. And we just got a takedown by uh, Eric Dale for Independence to go up three nothing. And uh, Clement just take a, took a three two lead on Gunnar Grandguard with late takedown at the end of the second or the end of the first period. To go to the second period, Grandguard by choice will start down in this position, and he trails at three two. And we got to stand up and a quick escape by uh, Max Schwartz here uh, in the second or in the second period. Thirty five seconds left. Both of them out here in the middle of mat. Trying to work their ties. Trying everything they can do to get to not go to the back side of the bracket. And uh, there we have uh, Erickson Dale in on a shot and grabbed a leg, but uh, Swartz uh, rolled out of bounds. And they're back to the middle. You're going to have a long, lonely afternoon. That's right, if you lose this match. There this got gym is packed today, but uh, it might be the loneliest place in the world to losers of the first round of the quarterfinals. Yep. 
A long wait. And with, with not a lot at the end of the, not a lot to wait for either. Exactly. It doesn't like you can come back for a true third or anything Grand, like that. Grandguard uh, got the escape. It's 3-3 between him and Clement with one minute left in the second period here in the quarterfinals at 152. And we end the match, end of the period here is 3-1 and uh, Max Schwartz goes down, has his choice. And uh, <coughs> Erickson Dale on top, good stand up by Schwartz, had good hand control. And he breaks free for one point, makes it 3-2. Uh, so, one point match up here at uh, 138 pounds. First round, West Union to sectional. Full house uh, here in the gymnasium today. And as you would expect, uh, six pretty good wrestling communities getting together yeah. here. Yeah, six, uh, six schools bring a pretty good following. Independence brings a big one. Decora brings a big one for home at West Union. Uh, Presco brings, brings, Preswood a, big brings a good crowd. Yes, they've got a great team. They finished second in the conference last week. 3-3. So. Three, three. Here's Clement in on a late takedown attempt at the end of the second period. But Grandguard will get to his underhooks and just kind of stay there as Grandguard tries to trip at the end of the period, but he'll run out of time. Clement and Grandguard will be 3-3 three, three going to the third. Right now we're still 3-2. Uh, both boys have made some shots. Both boys have defended them nicely. Fighting for hand control here. Now we're going out of, we get a stall call against uh, Independence for backing toward the edge of the mat. So Independence will have one stall warning. That's not often too bad either because uh, maybe he gets uh, a little more encouraged, takes more shots, because that's what's going to win this match, would be a takedown. At least uh, for another two minutes, because uh, Another minute, rather. We got 45 seconds left right now in the match. 3-3 three, three going to the third period. Clement starts in the down position. He is able to get to his feet. Hasn't gotten any hand control as Graham Guard circles around and able to mat return Clement as they head down to a minute 35 left in the period. Graham Guard and Clement tied at three. We're still 3-2 with Independence leading, but with a stall warning. Schwartz makes kind of a bad shot there. Uh, Andy uh, underhooks him, circles around, doesn't get anything. Schwartz comes up and faces him. And at the edge of the mat now, and Schwartz has his back to the edge, which is I'm sure the way Independence would like to see it. Independence done a good job of circling the inside to uh, keep, keep the referee off his back. And uh, Tanner Erickson Dale. Ends up with a 3-2 win over Max Schwartz from Wacon. And since that's a five-man bracket, Schwartz's day is done. Yep. Well, Schwartz is an automatic fifth laser. It's 4-3 as Clement gets an escape uh, as we've got some blood time down on the far mat. Clement uh, for Crestwood leading Grand Guard 4-3 with 51 seconds left in the period. Blood time for Grand Guard as he gets cleaned up. We're going to 145 where we've got uh, Austin DeMuth from North Fayette Valley against Elliot Phillips from Old Wine. North, uh, Austin DeMuth, 38 and 6 record, a senior. The third seed against Elliot Phillips, 12 and 27, a junior. Shot here at the edge of the mat by Austin DeMuth. DeMuth was an upper Iowa conference champ a, uh, a, a week ago. And he probably got the second seed because in their one head-to-head -head matchup, Adam Benzing of Walk-On beat him 5-3. Third, third, third seed. He, he got the yeah. third seed versus the second seed right. because Benzing beat him in their one head-to-head -head matchup. Yep. I'm sure that did it. And then, of course, you got Tyler Thomas uh, from Crestwood up at the top half of the bracket. And Thomas was the Northeast Iowa Conference champ. More blood time for Grand Guard with 44 seconds left in the third period, a 4-3 lead. Uh, we got a shot here by uh, DeMuth. For Clement. Good sprawl by Phillips. DeMuth just keeps his knees moving, comes up to his feet, and uh, Phillips breaks away. I like to see that on that shot by DeMuth to keeping his knees moving. Now he comes circles the outside, got head inside single, picks the leg up, comes to his feet. Come to the edge of the mat and they go out of bounds. Four three the score, 30 seconds left here in the period. Clement leading Grand Guard. 
Clement won their only matchup on the regular season by an 8-3 to three margin, and they'll try to move on to take on Chase Straw of Independence. Straw, a kid that was third a year ago at State, third two years ago at State. And yeah. One of the top-ranked kids in the state at 152. And DeBooth finally made that hit inside, uh, outside single uh, work and uh, took uh, Phillips down for a takedown. We've got 19 seconds left in the first period. Five seconds left in the period. Clement gets a late takedown to go up 6-3, and that's going to be that. Neil Clement of Crestwood. Leading by, or winning by a six to three margin, he will take on the top ranked kid in the state, Chase Straw of Independence in the semifinals this afternoon. But that's not all bad either because, uh, you know, uh, Chase uh, Straw will may well go on to win it. So he might get another match for true second. If he, you wins, bet. he wins his that's, third place. So. Yeah, when you're facing a kid that good, you're not sitting in that bad of a position because uh, yeah, as long as it's in the second round. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We've got uh, DeMuth here, chose down, starts second period. He's ahead 2 nothing. gets to his feet, but to go to bounds. And at 152, Cole Stan Stanford of O-Wine and Blake Courtney of Decora facing one another here. And we've got the state. Uh, two wrestlers haven't faced each other yet this year. Getting was, to a leg is Stanford. I was pretty impressed by Stanford last week. I think he did a pretty good job yep. there in the conference. Stanford able to get to his feet, has the leg up in the air, and now able to return Courtney to the mat with control. And Stanford with a 2-0 lead. Blake able to get to his feet right away, but Stanford controls that leg on the side of the mat. 125 left here in the period. We had a great high crotch shot by Phillips, but uh, DeMuth did a nice job of uh, squaring up and blocking with his hips. Now Phillips comes in on a shot, grabbed one ankle, then grabbed the second one, and as soon as Phillips fell, he moved up on top for uh, another takedown, makes it 5 nothing. And again, another uh, pretty good weight class here at 152. Stanford at 36 and 12 is a three seed, but the two guys in front of him, pretty tough competitors with Chase Straw of Independence and Zach Bruns of North Fayette Valley. Yes, but yeah. yeah. Those are two real tough kids. Because Straw is at 36 and 1, and Bruns of North Fayette Valley is at 38 and 3. Courtney able to get to his feet, but Stanford gets the legs up in the air and uh, able to achieve the mat return with 105 left here in the period. Stanford now uh, trying to get a leg in. And one of, one of Bruns losses too was to Jewel from uh, the top seed from Independence uh -huh. early in the season, so that was up at 160. And here is uh, here is uh, Stanford getting Courtney on his back, uh, gets a, a couple of back points, and now leads it four nothing with 40 seconds left in the second period. He's trying to cradle up Courtney, and he's on the side of the mat. And we've got a, we've the got a shoulders were, of Courtney were out of bounds, so Stanford lets him go and tries to turn him back in. We've got another two-point takedown. Uh, Austin DeMuth moves into a 7-1 lead now in the second period against Elliott Phillips. And we go to the third period. Demuth with a couple of uh, wins today uh, could reach 40, uh, 40 wins on the season. Not bad on sectional oh. Saturday. And it's uh, Phillips' choice, and he chooses neutral. Coach Casley came out and suggested maybe he's better go on their feet. And Perhaps. Stanford completes the fall of Blake Courtney in a minute 42. So Cole Stanford moves on to the semifinals, and he will take on Zach Burns of North Fayette Valley. Now, 7-1 lead over here. Uh, Austin to move over Elliott Phillips. So uh, neutral is probably Phillips' best chance. Maybe you get a throw or something like that. Uh, unless you're really, really good on top. Uh, pretty hard to come back from a 7-1 loss, or 7-1 deficit. Winner of that one will face Adam Benzing of Wacon. Benzing, a kid that qualified for state two years ago. Now 27 and seven record. And uh, down on the far mat now, we've gone on to the quarterfinals at 160 pounds. This is, uh, let's see, Austin Duffy of O-Wine at 35 and 12, a sophomore. Duffy last week was the 170 Northeast Iowa Conference champion. He gets the takedown on Chris Guest, the freshman from Crestwood at 12 and 30. He lets Guest up to make it 2-1. Yeah, Duffy looked tough last last week, too. Yeah. He did win a lot, lot of O-Wine kids yeah. did. Yeah. And here is uh, here's a takedown, a headlock, and a fall. 
for Austin Duffy. He completes the fall on guest in 37 seconds, so he will move on to the semifinals to take on Alec Felschul of Decora. We just had a hard double by Austin DeMuth to take Elliot Phillips to the mat to bring the spread to 9-1. to one. Uh, Real good, real deep double locked up behind the legs, head to the side, and... Uh, Good technique by uh, Austin DeBooth here. Now he brings the arm over the head, comes up around to the half Nelson. Got uh, Elliot Phillips on his back, looking for the fall with nine seconds left. And he's got it. Austin DeBooth pins Elliot Phillips with seven seconds left on the clock. Uh, to advance. And he'll face uh, Adam Benzing from Walk On, the second seed in the next round. That also should be a good move, good match. And uh, down at 170 on the far mat, Ed, Luke Dixon has taken a 2-0 lead for Decora. Dixon taking on Alexander Hipperly of Owine. Dixon at 17 and 15. Alexander Hipperly at uh, 14 and 27 for Owine. Dick, these two have not faced one another uh, this year, but we know a Luke Dixon match. It's uh, normally in a duel. It's a 12-point swing. We just don't know which, which way it's uh, going. That's to right. Play. That's right. And he, Luke with another I'll, nice takedown. I'll, I'll, yeah, and, and Luke has a nice outside single. Luke has a nice swing to his right. He holds the neck, swings to the right, grabs the leg, head drops to the inside. I think that's how he got the takedown. And he uh, leads it 4-1 here in the first period. And Luke not sitting in a bad spot if he can win. He faces Nick Baumler of uh, North Fayette Valley. Uh, Baumler probably the favorite at 170 pounds. If he can win, uh, if Baumler beats Dixon, uh, and if Luke can win his third place match, he might have a shot. That, yeah. Uh, not that's a, not a bad place to be sitting right now. No, no. If you're going to get beat, best to get beat by the best. Exactly. And you have a chance to come back. And we Baumler, a kid that uh, was a seventh place finisher a year ago at State. And we've got uh, David Miller from Wakan out here at 11 and 3 record against the number four seed David Jellings from North Fayette Valley, a 15, 7, 15 and 7 record. And we've got a nice fireman's carry here by uh, David Miller, and he gets his two points. Winner of that one will face on face the uh, top ranked kid at 160, Jake Jewell for Independence. And. Uh, And again, a pretty decent weight here with Jewel and Phil Stuhl and Duffy. And at the end of the first period at 170, Luke Dixon with a 4-1 lead on Alexander Hepperly of Owine. Winner of that one will face the top seed, Nick Baumler from North Fayette Valley. We've got uh, Miller here. He kept that arm on that uh, fireman, so he's got uh, had uh, gelling from the Fed Valley on his back ever since he hit it. And he gets the three to go up to the five nothing lead. Luke Dixon gets out, gets another escape, and he leads it seven to one on Alexander Hepperly with a minute 33 left in the second period. So Luke Dixon, a seniors, now uh, hooks up a half, starts to turn, gets some back points. And this is where he's best. He smells blood. He's out chest to chest. Bob Murphy taking a uh, long look. He's not a, he needs to get out a little bit more uh, over uh, the head right now. Now he steps over. Chest got to come back a little bit more. But. He's leading at least 7-1. Uh, to one. He's got three back points working for him. But Dixon looking for that ball with a minute left here in the second period. The chest has to come over a little bit more. He's uh, basically he's gotta, been sitting in this position for quite some time. He's got to bring that arm up a little farther, too. He needs to stick that guy's elbow in his ear and because uh, he's using it to post with. And uh, 40 seconds left here in the he period. Got lot, he's got a lot of time. Yeah. Now he let the arm come back there. Oh, now the kid is bridging with both feet. And that's the uh, shoulders are flat when you do that. And, he's, and there's the fall. Yep. Luke Dixon for Decora gets a fall in 334 over Alexander Hepperly of Owine. So Dixon with an opportunity to take on Nick Baumler of North Fayette Valley a little later on this afternoon. And we still rough five to nothing here. Uh, David Miller walk on over David Jellings from uh, North Fayette Valley. And we've got uh, Jellings in on a leg right now. But uh, Miller's blocked it with a uh, 
Whizzer and, and uh, the leg was kind of bent in and referee calls it uh, potentially dangerously come back here in the middle of the mat. Both boys again on their feet. 170 on the other end. Joe Frieden from walk on at 24 and 12, a junior. Mark Farlinger at 2 and 26, a senior for Crestwood. Frieden probably uh, walk him and uh, Benzing probably the two best chances for walk on to get some kids uh, moving on. Now Frieden did a real nice job last week. Uh, see, he wrestled one good match and then got caught and uh, put down in the fifth place instead of third. But, uh, Frieden has a takedown. He uh, pinned uh, Farlinger in their only matchup in the first period this season. Now uh, Frieden steps over. He's got Farlinger on his back. He's bridging with both feet, and there's the fall. 35-second fall for Joe Frieden. He will move on to take on Nick Holt of Independence in the semifinals at 170. And right at the end of the period here, Jelling's got a two-point take. At a, or, uh, yeah, Jelling's got a two-point take now. So, oh, now 7 0. But uh, we're all the way down to 220 on the far mat now. This is going to be uh, Tyler Flock for uh, Decora and Dustin Reagan for Walk On. And uh, we got Walk On right on top now. And uh, Jellings uh, sets out, turns, and comes back in. Score now. Yeah, 7 1. Walk on ahead. Miller, Miller is ahead. Tries to throw at the edge of the mat, and he's got it. He's got the two. Uh, got caught. Jellings pushing into him. And got the throw one out of bounds, uh, but he got two on the way out. Two takedowns, two near fall. Makes it 11 to 1. Dawson Reagan a little late in uh, getting to the mat at uh, uh, 220 pounds, but we'll be ready to go between him and Tyler Falk here in the not too distant future. And we've got uh, David Miller walk on on top. Riding pretty tough. Jellings North Fayette comes up, hand control, and he turns for one. Reagan won the only matchup between him and Falk this year by a 10 to 5 margin. That was in the duel over in walk on. And we've got an 11 2 score now. David Miller over David Jellings, North Fayette. Ah, drops in, Miller drops in on a single. Finish it. Nice. Dropped in on Reagan, a late. Reagan with the takedown on Falk to make it 2 0. And we're 13 2, David Miller. Walk on over David Jellings. This is one of those fourth, fifth seeds. Uh, the fifth seed leading the fourth seed, but that's probably nobody cares. Fourth and fifth. That's one of those situations where they uh, let the kids decide who's, who's going to move on and who's not. Falk able to get out to make it a 2-1 advantage uh, with one minute left here in the first period. And a headlock tried by Jellings. Uh, Miller pops the, pops the head outside and uh, leads now 15-3. And we're going to run out of time here. Uh, we got an escape here, makes it 15-4. So 15-4, David Miller walk on over David Jellings of North Fayette Valley. Major decision victory there for yep. uh, David Miller. As, as Reagan stout, still leads Falk 2-1 two on 220 on the farm mat with 20 seconds left here in the first period. And we're going to move up to 195 here. And uh, start with, and we've got uh, Daniel Ott from uh, Decora against uh, Trevor Trendy from uh, Crestwood. Uh, and we'll come to uh, the end of the first period at uh, 2.20. It's 2-1 Reagan. Ott was in on a shot but didn't secure the leg, and Trendy comes around behind for two. Trevor Trendy, the uh, fourth seed with a record 22 wins, 23 losses. Daniel Ott, fifth seed, 15-15. Both boys, sophomores. And both have had their some good moments of uh, good stuff this year. Yeah, they're, they're uh, a couple of battlers out here. Ott, Ott's a fighter, that's for sure, and so is Trendy. And uh, you see they've got almost uh, 500 records, both of them. Trendy uh, put an arm up uh, behind Ott's back. Ott uh, takes the arm away, brings, moves to his base. Trendy puts a half in, and then Ott takes the half off, tries for a wrist, doesn't get it, comes up for a half on the other side. 
Down friend, he makes that half work, and he's put uh, Otto on his back. He's got him pretty, he looks pretty flat here. He's up over the chest, and he gets the fall. So with minute uh, 11, minute 11 uh, River Trendy pins uh, Daniel Ott. And it's 3-3 between Falk and Reagan on the opposite uh, mat uh, right now as Trevor gets a uh, takedown here in the uh, in the uh, early in the second period. Yeah, it looks like we're going right to heavyweight here. 285. One minute left here in the second period. It's 3-3 between uh, Falk and Reagan. Falk's working off to the side, trying to hook something up there, but hasn't been able to do anything yet. And we've got uh, Henry Horan, 29 and 22. Boy, got a lot of matches in uh, from uh, O-Line against Allen Iverson, 17 and 9. Uh, Horan uh, from O-Line, a, a sophomore. Iverson from Crestwood, a senior. And uh, Iverson's the four seed. And uh, kind of interesting because he could have been seated behind Brent Bowers from Independent, so yeah. apparently either had a loss to him or a loss to common opponents. So anyway, Carter Zidlick, he's the number two seed. Ethan Lappy from North Fayette, a sophomore with a 23 and two record, is the number one seed in this weight. It's still, and now uh, Reagan with an escape with 23 seconds left in the period. Reagan leading by a 4-3 margin with 20 seconds left here in the period. There are no matches here in the first round at 182. Logan Williams of Independence, the first seed. Kelvin Geyer of North Fayette Valley, the four seed. Robbie McKeeman of Owine, the three seed. And Andy Lilligraven of Decorah is the second seed. And we've got right now a one nothing match. Uh, Henry Horan received a point for technical violation. I think probably it looks like they were doing a little, a little pushing and shoving and maybe he got the hand in the face. But as they went out of bounds to come back in, the official gave uh, one point red. So Henry Horan leads one nothing over Allen Iverson. So we've got two more matches left here in the first round of competition. Then we will be moving directly on to the semifinals uh, this afternoon. With six teams and uh, some open spots at weight classes, things probably going to be moving pretty quickly here this afternoon. Yeah, we don't have the, a lot of wrestling on the backside of the brackets. You know, really none at all here to start yeah. with. And uh, a 6-5 lead now for Reagan as he was given a quick takedown by official Bob Murphy, but he had to give the quick escape because he was given that quick takedown. 115 left during the period. Here is uh, t Trevor trying to, for the throw. It wasn't there, so he steps out and circles around. We've got a red choice here. Henry Haran from Owine decides to go down, and he's ahead up on nothing on that uh, technical violation. 105 left here in the period. Here is Falk in on a shot. Reagan able to get the hips back, tried to stuff the head, couldn't do it. Both men back to a forehead to forehead tie with 53 seconds left here in the third period. 48 seconds left in the period. Falk trailing by a six to five margin. Winner of this one gets Tyler Johansson from North Fayette Valley. And the winner of my match over here, I'll get Ethan Lappy. 23 and 2 from uh, West Union. Stole warning on uh, on Reagan here, and Reagan steps down, circles around, gets a takedown with 22 seconds left here in the period. It's an 8-5 lead. He lets Falk up to make it 8-6. Trevor trying to get after him, reaching for a leg, but Reagan had that head stuff. Trevor. Trying to push the uh, issue a little bit. He reaches for a leg, but uh, Reagan able to stuff the head. Five seconds left here in the period, and they go out of bounds with four seconds left in the period. It's got to be something awfully, awfully quick for Trevor to tie this match up as they will restart in a uh, neutral position. Falk shirt reaches for the leg, can't get it, and the period will come to a close, and the match will come to a close with Dawson Reagan leading by an eight or winning by an 8-6 margin over Tyler Falk of Decora. We haven't had a lot of action over here. It's still uh, with 30 seconds left to go. It's still one nothing. Uh, Allen Iverson's riding on top of Henry Horan from Presswood, or from Old Wine, excuse me. And uh, right now he's got. Uh, 
Horan broken down pretty badly, uh, pretty flat on his belly, but he's riding pretty parallel behind. And uh, this is about the time the official should give him a stalling call on top and didn't make him get out to the side, but I think the official's going to be satisfied to let the uh, period wind down. There's only seven seconds left, but this would be the time that uh, Iverson needs to get out to the side. Now he does, and Horan comes to his knees and time runs out. The other 220 quarter final on the mat now on the far mat. Jason Grover of Independence and Jared Knutson of Fresco. Grover uh, leading at uh, or 26 and 14. Knutson at 9 and 26 this year. And we've got uh, Horan on top now. Iverson makes an effort to stand up, but Horan grabs the uh, knee or ankle, picks up the ankle, breaks him back down again. Horan is coming up really, really high and. Uh, Iverson comes out to uh, face him, uh, tie the matchup 1-1. Take down here on the far mat for Jason Grover of Independence. He leads Jared Knutson by a 2-0 margin with 1-10 left here in the set first period. And we just went uh, out of bounds. And there's a fall for uh, Jason Grover of Independence. He completes the fall in 58 seconds. So. Grover will move on to the semifinals to take on the Northeast Iowa Conference champ, Travis McMillan of Owain. And there we've got a situation where Iverson tried a uh, sloppy headlock. He uh, will really go for that headlock and got probably got taken down uh, by uh, Henry Horan. And there's this and Horan on top leading now five to nothing. It was an escape in the meantime there by uh, Iverson, but uh, Horan, he tried another sloppy headlock and, and Horan fell on top of him for another two. Iverson trying to get up, he's grabbing Horan's leg, or head, excuse me, grabbing Horan's head. And, and the uh, last uh, semi, or the last quarterfinal is up uh, here on the far mat. It'll be Brett Bowers of Independence, an 8-1 record, Stephen Redman of Walk-On, a 3-18 record, a pair of seniors going at it there right here. A lot of action on your mat, Dave. Yeah, we had Iverson come to his, uh, kind of come up to his knees, and Horan drive, grabbed the leg, but Iverson ended up with a takedown. Now uh, Horan's up for an escape. Makes it right now 6-4, Henry Horan over Allen Iverson. Winner of this one gets Ethan Lape of North Fayette Valley. Yeah, it's uh, 24 seconds left. Two-point lead for uh, Henry Horan from the whole line over Allen Iverson from uh, Crestwood. But Iverson, when, if, he, if he would make that headlock work, he'll get uh, taken down and back. Four seconds left, and Iverson's chasing Henry Horan around the mat, grabs him by the ankle, the time is out. And so Henry Horan from O-Line. Brett Bowers also got a uh, fall pretty quickly. I turned my head quick, and next thing you know, Bowers is getting his hand raised down there. So Bowers moving on uh, to the semifinals for Independence, and Henry Horan for O-Line moving on as well. We went through that pretty quickly. Yeah, we did. Well, maybe they'd uh, get that uh, 45 minutes. Could be coming close. What yeah, is it? well, well, it's uh, 12, and it's not quite one yet. It's over 45 minutes, I guess. It's yeah. uh, 50. It's 50 minutes since we started. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you may not got a, got a lot more, but you you do have more than that. So we're uh, in the semifinals at 106 now. Michael Millage, the top seed for Crestwood, taking on Jarrett Orr of Independence. Millage uh, was the conference champ last week. Orr of Independence, the four seed, defeated William Miller of North Fayette Valley in the first round of competition. Millage in on a shot. or able to circle around, get out of bounds. 20 seconds into the period, it is scoreless. Philip Eady also up. Yeah, we have Philip Eady in on a hit in on a head inside single here. Got that leg lifted up high. Got it really high up and way up in the air and Parmley decides to bail out and uh, Philip Eady leads two to nothing now in the first 15 seconds of their match. Uh, Austin Parmley, the third seed, 31 and 14 record, so he's dangerous, but uh, Philip has always beaten him so far. Comes up, puts a half on, takes the arm through. He's got, uh, he's got uh, Parmley on his back and uh, he hasn't beaten Parmley pink bad about every time, every time they wrestle. Uh, Parmley is trying to struggle off his back. Edie still got the half in, got the arm up behind his back. He's really pushing hard. And uh, 
A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. Now Par Parmley tries to roll through. Phillip keeps him on his back. Uh, Parmley's still struggling. Millage leading 2 0 on the farm and on Or of Independence. Phillip still out. Now Phillip loses the half. Parmley's back to his belly. So Phillip Eady leading Austin Parmley 5 0 now with about a minute left to go. 38 seconds left in the first period at 106 over there. Michael Millage, 33-1. Uh, and one. His only loss was to Noah Five of New Hampton, and he avenged that loss in the conference championship match a week ago. And Millage leading 2-0 on Orr, a pair of freshmen. In fact, four of the five uh, in this weight class uh, with above 500 records, uh, four of the five with at least 26 wins this year. Parmley hits a, hits a sit-out. Uh, Philip, a nice job of following behind him. Phillip riding, he's got a tight waist on, pulls the hips over. Now he breaks uh, Parmley down flat on the mat. Yeah, Austin Parmley, 31 wins, beating a lot of kids. Phillip is really putting a lot of pressure on, stretching him out. Now Phillip's trying to put another arm up behind the back. In the uh, end of the first period, it's 2-1. Michael Millage with the lead, or a neutral start to period number two. Phillip trying to work at work of wrist. On Edie with a major decision and a fall against Parmalee this year. Yeah, you know, I mean, that just, I think, is really a testament to uh, Philip Edie's, Edie's ability that he can take a kid with 30 wins and just manhandle him like yep. that. And uh, got the uh, fall last week, got the major decision in the duel between these two teams, which was in New Hampton this year. Yeah, I'm impressed with the way Phillip on top can just uh, take that arm, you know, of, of uh, Parmley's put it up behind his back and, and uh, just, just kind of manhandle. Here's Millage with a takedown. He's got the fall. Michael Millage gets the fall in 245. He's on to the finals for the Crestwood Cadets. Phillips moved into a sit position. Uh, Parmley puts the, puts the leg in. He's up pretty high. Phillip trying to stand up with the legs in. Uh, and they called it potentially dangerous. So, and over at 113 right now, it's Joe Kenoki uh, for uh, Decorah. He will take on Taylor Wolfkuhl of Independence. Kenoki at 22 and 9, the junior. Wolfkuhl, the senior at 14 and 17, and a quick. Take down six seconds in for Kenoki. And Joe it. takes a 2 0 lead. And we've got Phillip hitting a nice switch here to come around behind for two. So Phillip leads now 7 0 over uh, Austin Parmley from Wine. And he's working on that arm again. Phillip puts a tremendous amount of pressure up on the chest, up on the back. He's put a knee up on the arm now. Oh, he's trying to get it behind. Parmley's doing everything he can do to keep that arm down on there under his belly, but he's got it up on the back. And uh, now he puts a lot of pressure. And now here's Kenoki getting a uh, arm up on the back of uh, Taylor Wolfkuhl on the far mat, uh, trying to work perhaps a wing and a wrist now. And he lets the wrist free, still has that uh, wing, but he still leads it 2 nothing here with 117 left here in the first period. Just kind of beating on him up uh, top now. Phillips still got that arm up uh, on uh, Parmley's back here. Parmley's trying to get the hands back. I think he's got him, but yeah, he's got him back now. But uh, Phillip grabs the wrist, brings it back through, looking for a ball and chain. Now coming up through the crotch. Now he moves uh, up toward the head farther, trying to bring that arm up on the back. And this is kind of a this wonderful job of Phillip. He has he has kept Parmley. Parmley isn't concerned about escaping. Parmley's concerned about staying on it flat on his belly here. He is really working for the fall. Both sides moves from side to side. Now he's up on the left side. He got the left arm up on the back now. We'll try that one. Kenoki has the wing and he's out over the head uh, for the reverse headlock. He's got his man on his back right now. As Wolf Gould trying to kick free with 23 seconds left here in the period. Kenoki, the top seed at 113 pounds. Now gets uh, out a little bit more over the head, gets out a little bit more over the chest. There's 10 seconds left in the period. He's got to get that arm extended a little bit more. He does that now with four seconds left here in the period. Two seconds left in the period. And Wolf Cool will be saved by the buzzer of the first period. Kenoki gets his uh, three back points. He'll lead at 5-0 going to period number two. And we're on we're in uh, the third period now. Uh, Parmley chose neutral. He'd been down long enough. And uh, Phillip with the 7-0 lead. Phillip was working a two-on-one there on the feet, looking for the takedown. 
And Kanoki started down, quickly got out. He leads at 6 0. Down on the far mat here in the semifinals at 113 pounds. We've got uh, Phillips still on his feet. Uh, tries to come underneath here, and he does, but it's out of bounds. Nice job. Looked like uh, Parmalee thought he had a front headlock on him, but instead Joel was working, or Phillip was working down there on the legs. Another takedown for Kenoki, and he's up to an eight nothing margin, and some blood time for the Independence wrestler uh, with minute 28 left here in the second period. Kenoki in control, leading eight nothing. Phillip now's uh, using a uh, got a got a tricep control, and uh, you think he's looking for a fireman's there, and he hits it, but uh, they're right at the edge of the mat, and they'll go out of bounds. 128 left here in the first period. Michael Millage, the first uh, finalist of the day, he wins by a fall in 245 over Jared Orr of Independence. So Millage onto the finals for Independence and Edie trying to join him there. Nice uh, tricep, tricep drop down to the outside leg and for a takedown here for Phillip leading 9 0 now. 128 still left in the period on the far mat. Uh, still some blood time for the Independence uh, wrestler. And uh, Philip riding hard on top. Carmelio has come to his knees. Philip comes around, uh, tight around the waist now, over the leg. 16 seconds left. Breaks uh, Carmelio down to the flat on the mat. And uh, looks like he's uh, trying to trying to uh, tilt him up for a couple more points. Doesn't get it. And uh, this is out of time right now, and it's going to end up being a nine nothing major decision. That's a major decision, two major decisions, and a fall against a kid with 31 wins this year for uh, Philip Eady. I think that's just a tribute to how good Philip really is. Yeah, yeah, tough kid. And you know, I think uh, with those tough kids, we get out in the lower bracket. Him and him working out with Joe all the time has yep. got has got to make both of them better. And Carter Hubka too at 120, I'm sure works out with him. We got a pretty good string of lightweights. Yep. Eight nothing. Kenoki still with the lead here at 113 pounds. And we're going up to 13 pounds, where we've got uh, Ryan Stephan, the second seed from Crestwood, against Miles Ramsey, third seed from Wacan. Ramsey with a 21-14 record. Stephan 20. Here's Kenoki. And eight. Kenoki steps over the head, has uh, Wolf Cool on his back once again. Here, got the arms tied up. 20 seconds left here in the period. Joe trying to finish it off and uh, move on to the uh, finals. You remember Joe was a controversial call away from uh, getting a wrestle back uh, last year in the districts down at uh, Western Dubuque. And there's the fall. Kenoki finishes it in 356. And he becomes the second finalist for the Corps of Vikings here this afternoon. Yeah. And uh, that Copperidge kid that beat him from Western Dubuque, uh, Phillip has uh, handled him pretty good. A 5-0, I guess, in the uh, Independence Tournament, so. And uh, we just had Miles Ramsey uh, get a reverse here on the edge of the mat. Uh, Ryan Steffen took him down early, but uh, got a little bit high here on the edge of the mat, and uh, Miles Ramsey uh, scored the uh, reversal, so it's 2-2. Miles Ramsey on top of uh, Ryan Stephan. Let's go. Ramsey a junior, Stephan a freshman. And uh, there uh, Stephan tries to switch. Ramsey follows along behind. And uh, there we've got locked hands called against uh, Ramsey on top. Uh, Stephan gets to his feet. Referee gives him time to see if he can get the two. Got the hold of uh, Stefan's leg, uh, Ramsey's leg right now, and he gets the two plus one for the uh, technical violation, locked hand, so it comes up 5-3. Ryan Stefan over uh, Miles Ramsey. And uh, there, uh, uh, Stefan has the cradle locked up now. Rolls Ramsey through, but doesn't get any points scored. Up on the other mat, it looks like we've got uh, Honor Slifka from Cresco against uh, Colin Cotta of Wakan to beat Jake Coons from Ola in the first round. Right now it looks like uh, Slifka is ahead 5-0. 
Back down to uh, start the second period at 113. And uh, Miles Ramsey will start on top of Ryan Steffen. Steffen leading 5-2. Steffen gets to his feet. Uh, locks hand, block, uh, hand control, but uh, Ramsey trips him back to the mat. And uh, we're 5-2. Crestwood on top here. We're 5-0 on the other mat here with uh, Connor Flipka ahead of uh, Colin Cotta. Actually, that's uh, Brandon Mayer down there oh, at, at 120 and Tristan Hansmeyer of Walk On. At 120. You were looking oh, at 26. I'm 26. So. I, pull, I move my sheet over at 26. Yeah. Well, once I'm you get sorry. 26, things slow down there, David. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'll still walk on in Crisco. Yep. Uh, Mayer, Mayer uh, had his man on his uh, back and gets uh, three more back points and leads it 8 0. They're at 120 pounds as they go to the second period. So. The finalists that we have had to uh, this point, Michael Millage of Crestwood will take on Philip Eady of Decor in the finals at 106. At 113, Joe Kanoki of Decor awaiting the winner of the match that Dave is calling right now between Ramsey of Walk-On and Stefan of Cresco. Nice. And right now, uh, Brandon Mayer has his man on his back after a quick takedown to start the uh, second period. Two more back points awarded. And Mayer just uh, dominating uh, Hansmeyer right now by a 12 to nothing margin. We've got uh, Ramsey uh, locked up behind uh, Stefan. Uh, Stefan tried to, try, just tried to stand up. Uh, Ramsey took him back to the mat. Stefan tried to switch. Ramsey broke him back down again. Now he's trying to power half. Work. Loses that. Comes back, tries to, uh, he's got the tight waist over the leg. And there's the fall for Brandon Mayer. He gets it done in uh, two minutes and uh, 48 seconds. So Mayer becomes the second finalist for the Crestwood Cadets this afternoon. And Ryan Steffen ahead 5-2 uh, right now with uh, 30 seconds left in the second period. Steffen still down. And uh, Ramsey covers here as they move to the center of the mat. Steffen with a quick stand up. Not and uh, Ramsey just drops, pulls him over backwards. And uh, Stefan got to do a little bit better job of spreading the legs out, uh, getting one leg in front of the other when he stands up. Keeps the legs kind of parallel with each other. Pretty easy to be brought over backwards. And at 126, Devin Storch, the top seed for the core up. He has uh, Jared Van Sickle of North Fayette Valley. Storch and uh, Van Sickle uh, wrestling each other in the semifinals here at 126. Storch in on a shot, steps through to the peek through position, still now has his head on his mat, on the mat. Now gets the head off the mat, steps over, gets the takedown. Now now gets a half in, has Van Sickle on his back for a second, but only got a second. And Van Sickle able to escape, and now uh, Stortz is hurt. Stortz is hurt. He is grabbing his left calf. Looks like a Charlie horse. Three time uh, for uh, Devin Stortz, and hopefully that's all it is, is a cramp. Yeah, we hope so. We got uh, Stefan got an escape at the very end of this uh, second period. We'll go up a 6-2 lead now over Miles Ramsey. And uh, now Steffens has a cradle on. And, uh, and uh, now we've got a reversal by Ramsey. Makes it 6-4. Steffen let that cradle slip. And, well, Ramsey working, uh, getting an arm up on the back. And now he comes out with a half, still behind though. Get, in, get out the side, Stefan trying to work to his knees. Ryan Stefan still with a 6-4 lead. They're still minute left. They're still massaging that calf of uh, Devin Stortz uh, down the way. It looks like it's just a, uh, a cramping uh, Charlie Horse there. situation there. And hopefully Devin can get back to his feet and uh, Nice standing. Take care of business in this one and get a banana and some water. Nice standing, nice standing, standing switch there on the part of uh, Ryan Steffen. And uh, he's trying to put Ramsey to his back now. He's got the arm up, got the arm across the face, across the, across the uh, road of uh, Miles Ramsey. Brings Ramsey into a near fall position. Ramsey tries to roll through. Now Steffen has moved up into a headlock. Now he's got the headlock on. Pretty good position. He gets the fall. So 544 have, uh, the time of the fall. Ryan Steffen. 
He will well, go on to face Joe Kanoki. Well, Those have uh, been some really good matches. Yeah, they have. Kanoki got him in the conference tournament, uh, or Stefan. Stefan won in the conference tournament. Yep. Kanoki got him in the in the dual meet. So and, and at the Flanagan. Yes. So so Stort still leading by a two nothing margin, working off to the side against Van Sickle here at 126 pounds, trying to move that arm up on the back with 50 seconds left in the period. Has control of the head. Van Sickle able to get to his feet, but Stort steps through and just buries Van Sickle right now, getting back points as we speak. 40 seconds left here in the uh, period. And we've got uh, Mitch Evans from Independence, the third seed, 29-7 and seven record against uh, Brendan Ryan, 40-7. And, and, and uh, 30 seconds left in the uh, period, and Stortz gets the fall. Minute 34 fall for Devin Stortz as he's on to the finals at 126. So Decora with three finalists uh, thus far as Devin Stortz moves on to the finals. And we've got a two-point takedown here by Bren Ryan over uh, Mitch Evans. And it looked like uh, Evans was in on a shot there, but uh, Ryan from O-line just uh, come up, spra spra sprawled, and then come up behind. Uh, Ryan, Ryan with a leg in now. Ryan, the Northeast Iowa Conference champ a uh, week ago, and Evans a returning state qualifier for Independence. And uh, Evans' headgear has uh, come around, is uh, down low on the face now. He's got to move it up, tighten it a little bit, and reset it. And come out of the new restart. Jake Kewens of O-Wine and Connor Slifka at uh, 126 pounds wrestling one another. And Slifka has taken a 2-0 lead here in the semifinals at 126. And uh, we've got uh, Evans with a sit-out. They're trying to establish some hand control and come up. Ryan hanging on. Ryan a junior, Evans a senior. Now Evans hits a switch. Uh, Ryan re-switched, but Evans stepped over. Evans stepped over. And uh, Evans is coming to, he's got a, Evans has a whizzer on now, but they're still uh, indicating control for Ryan. Now they come up neutral, although Evans has an, uh, Ryan's arm hasn't reached, uh, now, it's, now, now it looks more like neutral. And, uh, Usually they wait till the arm uh, goes across the center of the spine, but didn't this time. And we've got a uh, two-point takedown at the edge, right at the end of the period for uh, Brennan Ryan. So he's going to go up 6-1 over Mitch Evans from uh, Independence. And Connor Slifka of Fresco has just uh, completed the fall on Jake Kewens of O-Line. So Slifka wins by a fall at a minute 22, and he will face Devin Stortz in the finals at 126. So all finalists uh, here in the early weight classes have uh, all been uh, Crestwood Cadets or Decorah Vikings, the seven that we have thus far. And we've got Ryan starting on top here. Evans tries to switch, doesn't work, comes in, tries to, he's got the arm trap, not trying a roll, but uh, Ryan does a good job of uh, stepping across the back and hitching a, hooking a leg in. Uh, he's a little low though, he's got that leg in, the hip is dropped. And uh, Evans is, is trying to trying to dump him, but uh, that doesn't work. He comes up. Uh, Ryan still has the leg, and uh, even though Evans is on top, Ryan still has the leg, trying to hang on to it. Got to get the arm through to maintain control. Right now we've got uh, Ryan still with control, uh, even though Evans is up on top, and uh, Evans grabbing the leg, trying to pull him pull him under. And uh, but as long as as long as Ryan has that leg, we're not going to get a reversal, and we go out of bounds. And the Evans is, looks like still down. Uh, maybe he might have got an escape out of it, but uh, doesn't get that even. And so the score remains six to one. At 132, Jordan Larson for North Fayette Valley and Chase Lenhart of uh, of uh, into, of uh, Crestwood, I should say, are uh, facing off one another. Uh, Larson, a uh, state qualifier two years ago for North Fayette Valley, and Lenhart, a state qualifier. Uh, the last two years for Crestwood. Evans tried that switch again, and this time he made it, so he closed the gap 6-3. The winner of the match that you're calling will be the first non-Crestwood or Decorah finalist uh, this afternoon. Yeah, it's uh, Evans trying to get the arm up on the back, but he got a little high, and now uh, Ryan, he glommed onto a leg. And so even though Ryan has the leg now, Evans is on top, and he's got he's still got advantage. Trying to lock up a cradle here. And uh, 
And now he's got to get his head in the side, but it's going to be hard to get him to turn when he's, oh, he's got that leg. Ryan still has the leg. You recall Ryan defeated Brandon Mayer in the conference finals last week. That was after getting majored by him twice this year. Yeah, he's come on really tough here at the end of the year. 0-0 here at 132 between Larson and Lenhart. No scoring yet here in the first period. Both men just working forehead to forehead ties and we'll go 0-0 to the second period in the semis at 132. In the third period, we've got Mitch Evans deciding to go up uh, neutral. And uh, so it's 6-3 right now. Brennan Ryan ahead of Mitch Evans from Independence. Evans a returning state qualifier. For the Independence Mustangs, they will be hosting districts uh, next week in their beautiful new gymnasium. Yes, yeah, wonderful facility. And they're tied up, locked up down there in the mat. The referee calls a stalemate. They come back to their feet. Still 0-0 here in the uh, second period as Lenhart starts in the down position at 132. Larson uh, trying to work off to the side, tie up an arm. Cannot do it, but a stall is being called on Larson for inactivity. Jacob Peterson not liking the call of Bob Murphy. And, we and got he was totally off to the side. I guess uh, I didn't see it close enough from our angle. Ryan, Ryan with the takedown there, or with the uh, reversal yeah. there. Takedown, takedown, take even okay. started even started neutral. Now even turns into him, comes over, tries to put a half on, but Ryan, uh, he gets the re reverse out of it, but Ryan uh, keeps, keeps his head up. Now Evans comes over with a really a hard cross face and uh, trying to lock a cradle up. Eight to five is the score. Uh, Evans is trying, to get, really goes a little bit too hard for that cradle, and uh, Still 8-5. And uh, it looks like we got a two-point reversal for Brian Ryan to make it 10-5, uh, and he's getting back points, it uh, looks like now. Evans just uh, went to the well a little too often, uh, tried to look a little too high. Now Evans, uh, Ryan has a, a half in tight, and he's got to get out of the legs and get out over the head. But uh, he's coming way out over the head, and uh, at the end of the period makes it 13-5. Major decision for uh, Brennan Ryan, Owen. So Brennan Ryan and Brandon Mayer in the finals at 120. So we get to see a rematch of that great that, match that uh, we that was, saw. A week that ago. was a great match. That was a great match. By the way, Lenhart uh, here at uh, 132, leading Larson one nothing as we go to the second period, or the end of the second period. We'll go to the third. It'll be Larson's choice. We're going to 32 here on this mat. On this mat here, with uh, we've got uh, Drew Davis, uh, junior from Independence, against Mitchell Snicker from Walk On. Davis was the Walmart Conference champion uh, a week ago for the Mustangs. Yep, 22 and 13 record. Uh, Mitchell Snitcher, Snicker, uh, 21 and 16. So both semis at 32 are on the mat right now. Larson starting in the down position for North Fayette Valley here in the uh, period. 140 left with Lenhart leading by a one nothing margin. He started down in the second period and was able to get out. Lenhart now with a leg in twerk and a shoulder on the opposite side. Sailmate is going to be called. 130 left here in the third period. A one nothing lead for Chase Lenhart. We got a nice takedown by Davis here. Uh, Snicker avoided going to his back though. Scores 2 nothing. Drew Davis. I'm in by, the, by the way, in case you're scoring first four weight classes, it's the one and two guys in the finals, but a lot of wrestling to do yet this afternoon. And here's an escape for Larson. Larson uh, able to roll out of a hold of Lenhart. It's now 1-1 between Larson and Lenhart here at 132. Now we've got the uh, cradle here now. Looks like with, uh, yeah, Davis is cradled up uh, Mitch Nicker. And uh, Snicker rolling around. Davis out over the head. Still got that cradle locked up. Not a Put 
Clock hasn't moved in a while down at uh, mat number uh, on the opposite mat. Uh, they're going to take some uh, time off the clock. Well, seconds left. Blood time over there as well. And we've got time runs out, so it makes it 5 nothing. Drew Davis over uh, Mitchell Snicker from Walk On, 132 pounds. So far through the uh, first uh, four weight classes, the cadets, Crestwood Cadets have four wrestlers in the finals. Decora has three, and Owain has one. Cadets with Michael Millage at 106, Ryan Stephan at 113, Brandon uh, Mayer at uh, 120, and Connor Slifka at 126. Decora with Philip Eady at 106, Joe Kanoki at 113, Devin Stortz at 126, and Brendan Ryan in the finals for Owain at 120 pounds. And we had Sitker on top trying to put a cradle on as, as uh, Davis stood up. Davis reached in and grabbed a leg. Snicker, uh, Davis has uh, Snicker's leg. They're rolling around on the edge of the mats. Davis is going to come out the back door here, it looks like, and he does. And he's got two-point reversal. Here's uh, Lenhardt getting the leg up in the air of uh, Larson. Gets him on his back, and he is flat. And did they rule it a, uh, and it's going to be an injury time as Larson is injured right now. They did not uh, rule it a slam, I don't no. believe. No, you gotta they did not. you got to call out as soon as they hit. And he didn't. And that's what uh, Keith Slifka was asking the official Bob Murphy. Is that going to be a slam? It will not. And it will be a, uh, and uh, they got two points, back points before the. Uh, yeah, if, if it's, uh, as long as it's not a slam, you'll know, call back. Yep. Okay. Even, even though, even though they, they blew the whistle. Still back points. Well, you're my rules guy. You're my you're wrestling's version of Mike Pereira. Yeah, as so. long as it isn't, long as it isn't. Uh, yep. No. Nope. So it's going to be a 5-1 lead for Lenhart Larson is on his back uh, this afternoon. So uh, here at 132, the other semifinals, Davis uh, leading uh, Snitker. Now, if a kid is going to his back and he, he cries out or indicates that he's injured, you're going to get the two, even if you haven't been down there two seconds. Bad memories from 1999. Yeah. <laughs> and if you cry out after the two seconds have elapsed, you're going to get a three-point near fall. Yep. And Larson able to get to his feet uh, once again. 29 seconds uh, left uh, here in the period. Larson uh, talking to the trainers, talking to his coach, uh, Jacob Peterson. And it looks like Larson will be able to go. He will start in the down position. 28 seconds left here in the third with Chase Lenhart leading 5-1. to one. Lenhart, a two-time state qualifier for the Cadets, was sixth place two years ago and was a qualifier a year ago. And he will restart in the top position as we're back underway. Now, if you've, if you've got your three-point near fall and the young man cries out that he's uh, injured or, ble or bleeds, or it's a four-point four near point fall. Point. Yeah, it's a four-point near fall. Stall going to be uh, warned on Lenhart as he got the leg up in the air and able to get the escape now is uh, Larson as he spin away from the hold of Lenhart. It's 5-2. And here's another stall warning on Lenhart. And that is going to make it 5-3, but uh, that is going to be that. And the here it comes to an end, and Chase Lenhart wins 5-3, and he's on to the finals at 132. And here we got 7-1 uh, lead by uh, Drew Davis over Mitch Nicker from Wakan. Davis on top right now. Is, uh, we've got a minute 30 seconds left in the third period. And looks like we're going to get a one-point escape by Schnitker. He stands up and faces Davis. Davis dropped right in on a leg. It, uh, drove him out of bounds, but I don't think they've given any points yet. They're going to go back up neutral. Makes it 7-2. Semi at 138 on the opposite match. Trey Pekanovsky of Crestwood and Tanner Erickson Dale of Independence. Erickson Dale picked up a 3-2 win over Max Schwartz earlier today. Pekanovsky the top seed for Crestwood. He gets in a, a takedown, lets him up, lets his man up. He uh, leads 2-1. 140 left here in the first period. And it's a minute left, 7-2 lead for uh, Drew Davis over Mitch Nicker, both on the feet. Davis, nice uh, shot on a, on a uh, uh, for a takedown. He's got the leg locked, but uh, Snitker sprawled nicely. Oh, uh, good sprawl. Uh, Davis trying to come up between the legs. Now they're kind of 
Davis uh, kind of has well, got one leg of Snickers. Snickers draped over. No point scored yet. I think uh, Davis looking for the head. Snicker comes out to face him, and uh, they're going to go back to their feet. Snickers trying to trying to headlock. Davis locked up around the waist. Snicker got the headlock, and he's getting near fall points. Snicker locked up around that waist. He should have went to the front. He tried to hang on behind, and uh, Snicker made that headlock work on him. We could have, we could have our first upset of the day right here, Dave we Wilson. Could have. We seconds could have. left here in the period. Seed. And uh, Snicker's really got that headlock. He's he's clamped on tight, and uh, Davis trying to roll him through, but Snicker gets the hips out, and times that's time. But we're going to get three more back, and that's going to make it 7-7. Bonus wrestling. That's right. One more. We've got to put a minute on the clock, and away we go. And he was pretty close to getting those uh, Oh, he was close to getting down. that ball. Boy, he oh was. Boy. Davis fought and fought and fought. And uh, here, over here on the other mat, uh, Chase Lenhart leading, uh, or Pekanowski leading 5-1. we got Snicker in on a shot now. But Davis coming around behind, comes over the top. He's got to stick a leg in to get those points, and he does. And he wins 9-7. Yeah, 9-7. Well, you know what? Mitchell Snitker gave that uh, match probably more drama than what was anticipated. Oh, yeah, seven, but yeah. you know what, David? It's sectional Saturday. That, those things happen. That's right. Uh, I think there was a situation where Davis let up just a little bit. At least he didn't step in front of that headlock like he should have. And... Uh, that headlock gets you pretty quick five points. You bet. Davis uh, becomes the uh, first uh, finalist for independence here at 132. And uh, through two periods on the other uh, mat at uh, 138, Trey Pekanovsky uh, leading for Crestwood 4-1 on Tanner Erickson Dale of Independence. And we've got uh, Carter Block, O line 27-2. Looks like against uh, second seed Jared Kerr from uh, North Fayette Valley with the 28-12 record. So we've got a couple kids with a lot of wins out here, and we've got uh, Kerr in on a shot right now. Uh, block, block, blocking it. And uh, comes to his feet, uh, blocked with the uh, front headlock now. Uh, Kerr backs out of it. Looking for hand control now. They go over toward the edge of the mat, and they're out of bounds. And here's the takedown for Trey Pekanovsky on the opposite mat as Pekanovsky leads it by a 6-1 to margin on Tanner Erickson Dill. Short shot by uh, Kerr. Block step back. And uh, block with a collar tie here. Collar and tricep. Kerr pretty he buried his head pretty pretty deep in the shoulder of uh, Block. Now Block tries to shot. Uh, Kerr drops in on a leg. And uh, Kerr trying to get around behind here. He's got the leg. Block uh, controlling the arm. Looks like uh, O'Wine's crying for two. But, uh, and here's instead, Pekanowski uh, has his man on his back, and Pekanowski gets the fall in 4.52. So Trey Pekanowski onto the finals at 138 for the Crestwood Cadets. And uh, Kerr popped his head out and they come up on top there. Goldwine would have liked to have had two, but uh, that's why the official waits a little bit. And uh, Murphy did a nice job of uh, letting the situation develop and waiting, and, and otherwise it had been 2-2. Two -two. But if the guy had two, why uh, Kerr wouldn't have been able to pop his head out like that. So we had two -two, or 2 nothing match. Jared Kerr, the second seed, uh, North Head over a Carter Block, third seed from uh, Olwine. And at 145, Tyler Thomas of Crestwood, Elliott Ryan of Independence uh, are uh, in the semifinals at 145, and Thomas with a quick takedown, eight seconds in, leads it by a 2 nothing margin. And we've got uh, Kerr uh, tying the arms up uh, and leading 2 to nothing over uh, Carter Block, Olwine going in the second period. And Kerr defers. Block is going down. Or on neutral, excuse me. Block's going neutral. 140 left here in the second period as Thomas uh, lets uh, his man up but uh, takes him right back down again. It is a 4-1 lead for uh, Tyler Thomas. Thomas trying to step over and uh, trying to tilt him that way. Now has the arms locked up around the back and now puts a leg in. 122 left here in the period. And we've got our, both our boys tied up head-to-head -head here at 138. And now we've got Kerr dropped in on an outside single. 
Uh, Eddie's head inside uh, block. We're trying to work a uh, trying to work a wizard with a roll through, and uh, Kerr catches him on his back, and he's getting back points, and uh, got the fall. 2:41, uh, the time of the fall. And that roll, the roll through that Block tried, and uh, Kerr just caught him in the middle of it, and gets the fall. So he'll move on to uh, face Trey Pesanovsky from Crestwood in the finals. Kerr becomes the first finalist for North Fayette Valley. Yeah, we're kind of getting in the heart. They're a little bit, they're a little bit weak on the lower weights, but uh, you get right in the right in the center of the lineup. That's pretty tough from there on up. And a 4-1 lead for Tyler Thomas uh, across the way. He's uh, leading there at 145 pounds on his independence opponent. And we've the got other uh, semifinals up, is up at 45. Dave. Austin DeMuth against uh, Adam Benzing. Adam Benzing, the second seed to 27-7. Uh, Austin DeMuth, 38-6. So Benzing won the only matchup between these two wrestlers 5-3 this year. That's why he's second seed. Yep. And uh, Austin DeMuth, third. Nice deep shot by uh, by uh, Benzing. Kerr, uh, DeMuth comes up, face him. Now DeMuth is in on a reshot in deep. Benzing tries to throw. The outs, they go out of bounds. And we've got still nothing, nothing. Minute 15 left. A 5-1 lead now for Trey Thomas uh, down the way as he leads uh, Elliott Ryan of Independence uh, here in the semis at 145. Uh, that is with 135 left here in the second period. Well, through 138, uh, the top two seeds have held uh, as far as getting to the finals, uh, Dave. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, well, when you've got kids that have faced each other as much as we have, why well, it makes the seating. Seating at sectional is probably as easy as seating anywhere. But the only wrench in the, the, the wrench that was thrown in uh, was probably uh, Independence. Uh, the, quite a few of their competitors didn't have any matchups against uh, guys uh, that uh, are wrestling yeah. uh, here today. Part of the deal uh, is with Independence uh, wrestling in the WAMAC Conference, uh, you don't have a lot of chance for non-conference opportunities uh, no, wrestling no. their schedule. You, you don't, but a lot of times you have common opponents, yeah, and, that, and that really exactly. helps. And, but then you have situations here where we've got kids moving down, you know, from uh, 160 to 52 and the like, and that, and that kind of screws things up, of course. But uh, by and large, it's a lot easier seating than, than, than the early tournaments. Well, and with uh, the stuff like track wrestling, you you can't uh, can't hide anything anymore. Can't, you can't mark it as well as you used to. No, we'll no, no. <laughs> Thomas leading 5-1 still uh, with 42 seconds left in the second period at 145. So Benzing wins the toss, uh, defers, and uh, Demuth goes down. Demuth on a quick stand-up with good hand control breaks it, and he's out in uh, less than in four seconds. In fact, and uh, so we got. Return to our feet, where we went nothing, nothing the first period. Benzing uh, looks like he tries to make shot. Uh, nice counter by, uh, nice head and hands counter by Demuth. And it's a 5-1 lead now for uh, Thomas with 20 seconds left in the period. If Thomas wins this, the cadets will have a finalist at the first seven weight classes uh, here today. That doesn't surprise me. There we got the uh, takedown by uh, Adam Benzing. And, uh, Nice uh, job of moving Austin Duluth out of position, coming around uh, uh, behind. Trying to chop an arm, right with a tight waist. Duluth stands up to his feet, comes to the edge of the mat, and they go out of bounds, and he's still down. We go to the third period uh, with uh, Thomas leading Elliott Ryan 5-1, to one, and Thomas, by his choice, will go down to start the third period. And we still got Benzing on top here. A quick sit out uh, for Thomas. He's able to step through, able to cover, get a reversal. And now Thomas leads it by a 7-1 margin on Elliott Ryan of Independence. And we've got uh, had Adam Benzing with a leg in, but uh, official called it a stalemate. Brings it back to the center. Still scores 2-1. to one. He moves, moves to his feet. Benzing rides him back down to the mat. Again, again with a leg in. Two legs in now, really high. Tries to uh, bring DeMuth's arms out from him. Uh, DeMuth, he's trying to sneak out the back door. 
Uh, Benzing putting a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure in with both legs and really arching his back and he brings the move back to the mat. Adam Benzing doing a real good job with the legs in, uh, arching his back tough. Now he's got to turn the head though to get any points out of it. And uh, he doesn't and he's just killing time. And uh, Doug DeMuth, uh, the assistant coach for uh, North Fayette, asking for a stalemate uh, right now and finally gets one with 9.9 .9 seconds left here in the second period. Yeah, you know, the, the, the guy is uh, North Fayette kids uh, looking for uh, a stalemate and the walk-on folks there looking for what they're doing on the bottom. Well, not much. But when the legs are in as tight as they were with uh, Adam Benzing, there's not too yeah. much the guy on the bottom can do. 7-1 uh, lead for uh, Tyler Thomas on Elliott Ryan. Good Still, start. Uh, with a stalemate with 26 seconds left here in the third period. Good start. Uh, DeMuth tried to roll out from under it. Got away for just a little bit. Uh, referee gave Adam Benzing a one count there for... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, there's enough control there for near fall, but we can get anything out of it anyway, so we're going in the third period, 2-1. to one. And uh, 26 seconds left in the uh, third period uh, down the way. Tyler Thomas of Crestwood leading by a 7-1 margin on Elliott Ryan of Independence. And we're going to go both up. It's really kind of surprised me the 2-1 uh, makes it 3-1 uh, to one now. And uh, but maybe uh, Luth, I guess, didn't want to go down there and fight those legs for another period. But we've got Adam Benzing with a 3-1 lead now. Benzing did not make state a year ago. He made state two years ago. DeMuth was the conference champ for North Fayette last week. And uh, it's a 7-1 victory for Tyler Thomas down at 145 as he moves on to the finals as he defeats Elliott Ryan of Independence. We're still on our feet. Uh, DeMuth uh, trying to tie up Benzing's arms. Uh, Benzing uh, spikes out of it, squares up with it. Benzing now back to his feet here. And uh, DeMuth in on a deep shot. He's in. He's in deep. He's got the got the leg, but Benzing has a tough wizard putting a tough wizard on. And uh, Benzing tries to dive out of it now, and uh, DeMuth gets a takedown right at the edge of the mat. And he's going to let him go as they come back to the center. So we're going to have an intentional release here, and we're going to start up with uh, Benzing leading 4-3. Down at 152, Chase Straw, the number one ranked kid at 152 pounds, gets a takedown on uh, Neil Clement of Crestwood. Straw from Independence at 36 and one with an early two nothing lead. We've got uh, neutral right now. Benzing leading 4-3 with 40 seconds left. And DeMuth is going to have to put some pressure on. Uh, you know, the, the onus is on him to get the takedown. Benzing makes kind of a half shot to a leg. That keeps the referee off him. Now DeMuth tries kind of a throw backwards. Benzing, uh, good position, keeping good position all the time. Blocks that. Both of them hanging on the head now. That's something DeMuth can't stand. You get, we gotta, he's got to get, he's got to generate a little action, a little motion here. Tries to come around behind. Tries to win after a leg. Uh, Benzing, nice job of stepping out of it. And they go to the edge of the bat. And uh, we're going to get a stalling call on Ryan Benzing. I'm not sure he's deserved, but that'll keep him in there anyway. And uh, DeMuth uh, makes another, keeps making shots. He's got to keep pressure on if he wants a stalling point. Benzing doing a good job of tying the head up now, and they uh, runs out of time, and it's 4-3. Uh, and the second seed, Adam Benzing, will defeat Ryan or Austin DeMuth. Well, one match was five to three. One match was four to three. A five nothing lead for Chase Straw down the way at 152 pounds. So Benzing becomes the first finalist for a walk on here this afternoon. Yep. And uh, we're going to go to 52 here where we've got Cole Stanford from Owine against Zach Bruns from uh, uh, North Fayette Valley. The Tiger Hawks. And uh, Cole Stanford, I thought was pretty impressive in the conference, but uh, Zach Bruns behind him right now, lifts him up off the mat, returns him to the mat for two points. Stanford, uh, or uh, Bruns won the only matchup uh, between these two wrestlers by a fall in 557 this year. Now Bruns is a tough wrestler, and uh, or Stanford, I said, was impressive last weekend. And uh, Bruns was actually the 60-pound up rival conference champ for North Fayette Valley. Yep, and uh, but you know, he got, I think he could. Uh, he, he, I'm not sure he couldn't get through districts to state, but when you get down to state, he probably wants to be at the best weight he can be yeah. at. 
And uh, we got an escape, here, escape here by Stanford makes it 2-1. And from an Aquora perspective, it was probably nice seeing Bruns at 52 as compared to 60. That oh, would have yeah. made it uh, a little harder for one of Decora's best kids in uh, Alec Felstrom. Well, Felstrom, I think, only has about three losses on the year, but one of them, or two of two them, of them, two of them was to Bruns. And they on were, back to back nights. Yeah, back to back nights. And one of them was, at least one was a major decision. Both, Both of them were. Yeah. So. And then, of course, you got Jewel from Independence, who has beaten Bruns early in the year. So did that, so in overtime. That would have been a tough. That would have been a tough wait there at 60. So I'm glad to see him down here. And uh, Independence is uh, Chia Straw now with an eight nothing lead. Two more back points awaiting for him down there. Straw, the number one ranked kid at 152 pounds, and Bruns of uh, North Fayette Valley uh, also ranked at 152 this year. And Bruns gets to take down right at the edge of the mat and make it 4-1. In fact, uh, Straw and Bruns are first and fourth, according to the predicament, at 152 pounds at Class uh, 2A. Here's an escape uh, for uh, Neil Clement. It's a 10-1 lead for Chase Straw of uh, Independence. And uh, Bruns on top. Riding really tight. And uh, got a cross arm ride. Straw, two-time state place winner, a uh, third place finish the last two years for the Independence Mustangs. Here's a takedown though for Clement to make it to 10-3 as they go out of bounds with 35 seconds left during the period. Yep. It's sectional Saturday. You can't put the baby on cruise control until six minutes are done or That's the other guys for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> Clement starting in the uh, top position. Straw able to get to his feet, but didn't establish any hand control. Clement down to the leg, still has control of that leg. Straw gets back to his feet, able to escape the grip and get the escape, and make it an 11 to three margin with 17 seconds left during the second period. Now Bruns uh, tried to roll through. Stanford followed him nicely. Uh, I've got to give these old line kids a lot of credit. Uh, they fight hard. Um, oh yeah. They, they've, been, they've been fighting hard. Uh, well, he's behind four to one. Uh, Here's Brun uh, Straw with another takedown on Clement to make it 13 to three as we go to the third period. And we got uh, Stanford here with uh, hanging onto a leg. You now he's riding the ankle, but he doesn't have Bruns broke down. Bruns tries to roll, and this time St uh, Stanford doesn't catch him, and uh, Zach Bruns goes up six one. And then reversal. Now he's uh, riding the arm, getting the arm clamped up pretty tight on the back of uh, Cole Stanford. And uh, Stanford pretty well bellied out, trying to get his hips up underneath him. Brun still has that arm locked up on in the back. Trying to work across face, uh, uh, come through and then hook up a Hassman is what he'd like to have. Here he goes underneath the arm, and uh, but uh, Stanford comes, fights to his feet, and uh, gets his arms free, tries to hit a switch. Uh, Brunswick jams and blocks it. Bring, yeah, he grabs the far arm and uh, got, uh, got uh, Stanford pretty well extended. 1.15 left in the third period of Straw. As the legs split on uh, Clement, uh, is getting back points as we speak. 1.05 left here in the third period. Jay Straw of Independence trying to win his 37th uh, match of the season. And we come to the edge of the mat here and go back to center. Bruns uh, still on top, uh, scores six to one. Bruns. Uh, seconds left uh, here in the period as uh, the pinning combination still uh, there for uh, Straw. A caution on Stanford for a quick start. Another pretty good weight class where five to six kids had at least uh, 27 wins this year. <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot of winning. You bet. You know, for, and, and then to think of the fact that some kids, you know, Grand Guard, uh, 27 and 4, and he's out first round. Yep. And that's a tough weight class. Your 4 or 5 matchup was 27 and 4 and 32 and 9. Yeah. Straw gets the three back points awarded and lets Clement go to make it 16 4. Seven seconds left in the period. And Chase Straw going to move on to the finals for Independence at 152. Straw wins 16 to 4 via major decision over Neil Clement of Crestwood. So Chase Straw becomes the second finalist for Independence. And we're back. On, we're on our feet here now. Uh, go. 
Sanford decided he didn't want to go down under Bruns anymore and going back on his own up. Makes a little shot. Doesn't work. Goes reshot by Bruns. Doesn't work either. Face-to-face uh, -face right now. At 160 pounds on the uh, 160 semifinals, Jay Jewell of Independence and David Miller of Wacon now underway. And we're out head-to-head. Uh, -head. Uh, Stanford trying to come around. Bruns kind of had the arms tied up, but uh, Bruns so good at holding his position, and he comes up on top for two, makes it 8-1. Um, Zach and, Bruns. And here is Jewell with the takedown. Had a cross base, getting some back points that way. He's awarded two more back points. And it's a two no, or a four nothing lead for Jake Jewell, 30 seconds in to period number one. And Zach Bruns lets uh, Cole Stanford go at the edge of the mat there, makes it 8-2. Jewell uh, now with another uh, pinning combination uh, hooked up on uh, Miller. Gets three more back points uh, and the hold uh, given up to make it uh, now a 7 to nothing lead for Jewell. He uh, puts uh, Miller on his back once again. Just kind of toying uh, with him right now. Two more back points, making it 9 to nothing. Uh, Bruns in a, on a low single, uh, picks up the ankles, and he's got a two-point takedown, you know. Bruns doesn't look aggressive. He doesn't look uh, fast. He, he really doesn't look very impressive at all, but when he hits a move, he hits it all oh, away, yeah. and he scores points. Oh, yeah. And he doesn't give the other guy anything. Very seldom is he out of position, a little bit out of position now as uh, he tries to roll through. Stanford comes up, but Bruns kicks him out of bounds on top, and, and uh, he just... Jewell has two back points waiting him. He is awarded them, and it's 11 to nothing with 30 seconds left in the period. As the arms tied up once again, steps over. He's out chest to chest. He's got his man flat and gets the fall. Jake Jewell of Independence onto the finals at 160 with a fall in a minute 30 over David Miller of Walk On. We've got Brack Zuns, Zach Bruns on top of uh, Cole Stanford here. At the end of the period, it's 10 2. And he isn't even breathing heavy. <laughs> you know, he just, just, yeah. he's just methodical. He's just so methodical. He, uh, but you know what? Sometimes uh, some of the better kids are that way. Well, yeah, he's methodical. He can't. He takes care of business. Gets out there and and uh, makes it work. And uh, 160 uh, semi is up for you there, David, yeah. with uh, Alec Felstrup. And there we have uh, the second seed, Alex Felskill against Austin Duffy of Olwine. And Duffy looked tough last weekend. And 170, Nick Baumler of North Fayette Valley with a quick takedown on Luke Dixon. He leads it uh, two to nothing. Baumler, a uh, kid that finished seventh last year at state. And he was a uh, upper Iowa conference champ last week for North Fayette Valley. And uh, Bill Stuhl and Duffy. Uh, Duffy uh, hits a fell stool in on the leg. Duffy hits a headlock. They come out of bounds, and uh, even though we get the roll through, it looks like apparently a leg fifth foot went out on that roll through. He's got to watch that headlock. He won't roll through all of them. Exactly. And, uh, Duffy was the 70 conference champ a week ago for Owine. And he's in on a head out, a head inside single, and gets a two point takedown over Alex Fellstool. Duffy 35 and 12, sophomore. Here's Baumler with a wing and a wrist on uh, Dixon. Steps over, has Dixon on his back with 103 left here in the period. Duffy coming out front for, it looks like he's coming out for a three-quarter Nelson here. And, uh, three points awarded, nice. but they go out of bounds. Five nothing, Baumler with 57 seconds left here in the first period. Still, still with a three-quarter Nelson. He tried to trade it for a cradle, but uh, let go of that and come back up. And uh, they go out of bounds. And so it's 2-0. Uh, Austin Duffy ahead of Alec Dossiel. So far through 52, it has been the one in the two seeds. Felstrel is the two seed here at 60. And uh, Duffy is the three seed. We had a three seed win once, didn't we? Nope, no? not yet. Okay. And... Uh, Duffy trying to make it the first three seed. Riding tough on top, tying the arms up. Felstool sits out. You got to turn, got to do better than that. Now he comes up in a tripod, got to keep those feet moving. Feet are, feet are like they're in concrete, they're not moving. But he comes up, Duffy tries to, tries to tie up an arm, Duffy's still in control. And he gets a one count, takes, he ties those arms up and brings uh, Felstool back to the mat. And, uh, 
Okay, you're gonna go, uh, Alec came out up to his feet, but their time's, time's up, so it's going to go into the second period, 2-0. And, and Baumler like going to the second period on Luke Dixon, leading 10-0, and Baumler is going to go beneath Luke Dixon. Interesting. Alec choice, and Alec chose neutral. Even after uh, Duffy got the first eight down. Here is uh, Baumler quickly to his feet. Uh, Dixon down to an ankle. He's able to get him uh, back uh, down with one trip and then with a second trip. And then they go out of bounds with 148 left here in the second period. And we had uh, Felsul in with a, actually Felsul made a shot. Duffy made a reshot. Uh, Alec put a front headlock on and then uh, used the front headlock to come around behind to score two. So it's 2-2 uh, two -two now. A lot of wrestling left. One minute, 120 left in the first second period. Ballmer able to quickly get to his feet on the second try, and he leads uh, Dixon by an 11 to nothing margin. Hellstuhl now with a uh, wing and a wing here on, on the left side. Putting the wing up on the, uh, trying to get the arm up on the back. Now he's going around the head on Duffy, but got, hasn't got the hips, hasn't got the hips down yet, but he's getting back points. He's getting back points. He's got them down. He, he's got the shoulders down. And he's got them down tight, and he pins him. And uh, that's why Alex Gelsul is seated second. And uh, fall with uh, about a minute left in the second period. 3.09 the time of the fall. So Alec Belstro becomes the fourth finalist for the Decorah Vikings uh, here this afternoon. He will take on Jake Drew of Independence in the finals. And down there at 170, uh, Nick Ballmer with a 13 to nothing lead on Luke Dixon with 50 seconds left uh, here in the period. And we'll have uh, second seed Nick Holt from Independence against Joe Frieden from Wacon. Uh, actually, you're at 82 nope, there, David. I'm at 82. Logan uh, yes, Williams of Independence and Kelvin Geyer of North Fayette Valley. Yes, there we go. Potentially dangerous call with 34 seconds left during the second period. Logan As Williams with a 2014 record against uh, Kelvin Geyer, 25 and 17. Palmer still leading 13 to nothing. Trying to put a leg in. Looking for a tilt that way. Has control of one of the arms. Tries a cross face the other way. 24 seconds left during the period. And Nick Palmer just dominating uh, Luke Dixon. Palmer at 38 and three this year. Was an upper rival conference champ. A state place winner a year ago. He's now getting back points. And this, that will be that. It'll be a tech fall in 351. 16 to nothing, uh, Nick Baumler uh, defeating Luke Dixon of the court. And we've got a takedown by Logan Williams, Independence. Uh, he moves up around the head, and he's getting back points now uh, over uh, Kelvin Geyer, or Fayette. He's got him pretty tight now on his back. He's got a cradle. Uh, he gave up the cradle, come up, locked up an arm, up the head and the arm. And uh, got to get out of the legs, up over the head a little farther. Now he's coming back across to the other side. Uh, looks like he'd like to. No, he's going back to the other side again now. Same side he's got the he's in the same side he's got the half. And uh, coaches up here, Independence coaches, telling him to get out to the head more. Other semi up at uh, 170. Jewel Frieden of Walk On and uh, Nick Holt of Independence. He's still got 20 seconds left. Uh, he comes. He's been going swinging, swinging back and forth from over the legs out over the head. And uh, Geyer from North Fayette fighting it off all the way. And there's three point near fall for uh, Logan Williams, Independence. 0 0 uh, between uh, Holt of Independence and Free of Walk On. Here is Holt uh, in on a uh, single. As the head between the legs can't advance from that position as Frieden got the hips back. They go out of bounds, 108 left during the first period. Scoreless match between Frieden and Holt at the 170 in the semifinals. We got Independence started down here in the second period. Leading 5-0, comes up to his feet, leading 6-0 now. Got a headlock try here, looks like, by Geyer. Heads popped out by Williams. Another takedown makes it 8 0. Now he's working to get the arm up behind the back. 
And he does have Geyers on him. Geyers flips his arm out, comes up into a tripod, gets his head and knee a little close, and we've got a cradle down here by uh, returns into that with a cradle. Harris Holt in on a leg of Frieden. Frieden trying to whiz her out and get the uh, hips back. Uh, Holt still with control of that leg, but can't advance and lets the grip go. It's still 0-0 and, between uh, Holt and Frieden with 20 seconds left in the first period. Williams' cradle slipped there as he went to the edge of the mat, and uh, Geyer gets out as they go out of bounds, makes it 8-1. to one. Five seconds left in the period uh, on the uh, edge of the mat. Uh, Independence is Holt does get a takedown as they go back to the uh, center. It is a 2-0 lead for the Independence wrestler. Uh, Holt at 170 pounds. Again, we're at 170 and 182, and we have had all one and two seeds advance to this point, to the final. And got an outside, a head inside single shot here by uh, Williams. Uh, got uh, Geyer's leg up, goes for the far ankle. Geyer still has Wizzer in though. And uh, as they come to the edge of the mat, uh, Wizzer slips out and Williams takes him down uh, right as uh, six seconds left. Second period. Starting in the down position is Frieden. Frieden able to get to his feet, hasn't established any hand control. As Holt tried the mat return, but they go out of bounds. Minute 51 left here in the second period. Still a 2-0 lead for Holt. And we had uh, Geyer to stand up. Williams dropped down on both ankles and takes him back to the mat. We're going to go neutral on the third period. Was, Up into uh, a uh, tripod there was Frieden, but Holt doing a good job of keeping that hand control, keeping good hip pressure, and still keeps him in the uh, down position with uh, 133 left here in the second period. Nice. And we're still on our feet neutral here. We're still 10-1. Both boys on their feet, Logan Williams and Kevin Ge Kelvin Geyer. An escape awarded to Frieden. It's 2-1 uh, here at 170 as they go out of bounds with a minute 15 left here in the second period. And we've got a takedown to his back by uh, Williams. And he gets the call. That was quick. 4.57 the time of the fall for Logan Williams. They had a 10 to 1 lead, I think, at the end. He comes up and gets the fall. And now uh, you'll have the McKeeman and yep. Lillegraven matchup, yep. David. Uh, Lillegraven seated third, or second, uh, McKeeman. Seated fourth, both boys have a uh, McKeeman with an 18-24 record and a sophomore, Lilligraven with a uh, Decora with a 19-18 record seated. Uh, Andy, has, grade. Andy has beaten him twice, 10-5 and 6-1. But McKeeman is dangerous, yep. uh, he can throw. And uh, nice uh, job on the legs by Lilligraven, comes up and scores. Two. McKeeman did a lot of scrambling under there, but Andy did a nice job of following him. And uh, Andy on top, uh, wrist in the crotch. Andy comes up outside, now puts wow. a half in. He's got McKeenan on his back, getting back points right now. Boy, did a nice job of coming uh, up to the head. And uh, that's, like I say, McKeeman is dangerous. He can throw, uh, but not but from this not position. From this not position, from this position. Exactly. No. Andy uh, got, got the three back. He's in the legs a little bit uh, far. And the Keeman bellies out now, and, and uh, Scott scores 5 nothing now. And the little Robin ahead of in the, uh, Robbie McKeeman. In the other uh, semifinal here at 170, Nick Holt of Independence with a late second period takedown. He has taken a 4-1 lead on Joe Frieden of Wacon. Andy riding with a wrist in through the crotch. Drives McKeeman over. Doesn't get any back points out of it, though. McKeeman bellies back out again. Andy uh, doing a, riding the wrist really tough, trying to bring it through, in through the crotch. Now he turns McKeeman to his back. He's got him on his back now. It doesn't have much. McKeeman trying to rolls out of it. Andy's way high and gets out of position. 
He gets three back, and uh, Owen gets, uh, McKeeman gets a two reversal. And it's 8-2 uh, now, uh, McKeeman. And, uh, and he tries to throw him to his back. And uh, they were going to give him they a, give him a reversal, but he had it already. Yeah, so exactly. yeah, he had it already. You can't get two at it. Can't get him two at a time. An escape for Holt on the far mat. Holt leading by a 5-1 margin on Frieden at 170 pounds with a minute 13 left here in the third period. And we go into the second period with an 8-2 lead. Andy uh, Lilligrove and McKeeman, he defers. And uh, let's see where Andy goes. He's going to go down, I guess. Might be the safest. And he comes up. Tries to goes moves into a switch. McKeeman follows nice to McKeeman's pretty high. He's really high, and he's got to look for a leg. McKeeman stuck a leg in, but he's really, really high. Uh, he got kind of a power half in, but he's, he's he's off the hips. He's hanging low. We got to pop through. We got to pop up and out of there. We got to get our arm free. There we do, and we got two, and we come right up to a half. Nelson, but nice. we're trapped in the legs. Five one. Uh, Hold leading with 37 seconds now left he's, in the period. He's, he's out of the legs now. He comes up over the top of the power half, and he's getting back points now. Now he reaches, uh, he reaches down, lifts the leg up. Now doesn't do it. Now McKeeman tries to roll the other way. We've got to reverse the half, and we do. Now we got the half reversed. We got to move up over the head a little bit higher, and uh, lift the head a little bit more to get up over the head. Got him locked up pretty tight with a minute left. Need to stay up there, locked in. It's a good place to stay locked. I'm not sure we can pin him because we kind of got our hand under his shoulder blade. Now we got the hand out of the shoulder blade. We're still up over the head. And uh, stay locked in there, Andy. Stay locked in there. Stay locked in there. Just keep him there. Just keep him there. He'll go down. We got time. 45 seconds left. Stay up over the head. We got our hand under his back, it's trouble. Now we got the hand out, and we got the hand out, we got the fall. Andy Lilligraven becoming the fifth finalist for the Cora here at 182 pounds, getting the fall in a minute 29. Good job of staying up there, going after that fall. Really hunted for it. So the 195 semi should be uh, coming should up be next. Coming up. Uh, Lamb Fear of Owine, Trendy of Crestwood, and Lansing of North Fayette Valley, and McMillan of Independence. So looks like we've got Lamb Fear of Owine and uh, Trendy up there. Trendy I think you know, he's still got 170 up on the board, but I think that just is. The, uh, one thing I, I had forgotten. Yeah, now they got it up. One thing I had forgotten before uh, doing some research uh, this week. Lamfer, of course, the conference champ last week for Owain. He was a state place winner for Owain last year, finishing seventh. Yeah, tough. And uh, we've got McMillan and uh, Lansing from uh, North Fayette down here. McMillan from Independence, 33 and six, and Lansing from uh, North Fayette Valley, 23 and 15. Nashua Lansing from North Fayette Valley. Like, uh, number three seed against uh, Matt McMillan, 33 and six independence. And we've got uh, the other other end, we've got uh, Zach Lamphere from Old Wine, 45 and one against Trevor Trendy, 22 and 23 from uh, North Fayette, uh, from Cresco. Nice slide by by Lamphere. And uh, we've got uh, takedown by, of course, by Lamphere, cradle on him right now. McMillan and Lansing, nothing, nothing. And uh, Lamphere still holds the cradle. Little shot by McMillan. Nice sprawl by uh, Lansing. And uh, 
McMillan still with the cradle on Trent. His score, score still shows 2 nothing, but uh, referee's been holding five on his hands here now for about a minute and a half. Holding a three on his hands, rather. All a lot of position by Lansing. Uh, McMillan almost took him to his back, but the Lansing recovered, came back to his feet again. We're going to end the second period up on the far mat with a uh, 5-0 score. Uh, McMillan over uh, our lamp here over uh, Trendy. Now we've got McMillan with a takedown, and he's taken Lansing to his back, getting back points with uh, 20 seconds left. Still, uh, still comes out to the front. Uh, Lansing kind of comes back, comes back to his knees now. Uh, McMillan still has the arm locked up, so he's still got control. And he comes back up on top. He got a two on the back there, so he's got to up four to nothing right now. Uh, Matt McMillan, Independence leading Nashville Lansing in North Fayette. Lansing's choice, he defers. Lampier uh, leading by a 5 nothing margin on the opposite mat uh, with a minute 30 left here in the second period. And McMillan goes down to start the second period with a 4 nothing lead. McMillan comes to his feet, establishes hand control, goes out of bounds. Driven out of bounds by Nashville Lansing. Lampere still leading 5 0 with a minute 10 left here in the second period. Two hours into the day, and uh, we're already uh, almost uh, through the semifinals this yep. afternoon. So just first and third uh, to go after this, and then uh, the fifth place matches and any potential wrestle backs that we will have this afternoon. Again, and McMillan is, comes up with a standing switch for the reversal. It has all been one and two seeds advancing through the finals uh, through 182 pounds. And. Uh, we're coming across, got the arm up on the back. Working on the shoulder here hard of uh, Nathan Lansing. And then Nathan Lansing's got his shoulders taped too. So now he snaps the head, seconds over the top of the head, brings him to his back. And he's getting back points now right on the edge of the mat. And he got the call. And it happens in 347, McMillan. A two-time state qualifier for independence. Uh, moving on to the finals here this afternoon. And he becomes the sixth finalist for independence here this afternoon. So we got uh, still leading seven to nothing as we head to uh, the end of the second period. Zach Lampier, the top seed for Owine at 45 and one this year, was a seventh place finisher a year ago at the state tournament. We're going to go to 220, and we've got Travis McMillan from Owen against Jason Grover from Independence. And uh, Travis McMillan in on his feet. Owen in on the legs from Owen. Uh, Jason Grover reaching over the top, grabbing an ankle. They're right on the edge of the mat. And uh, how's the official? I just blow the whistle and bring them back. Cause I don't think anybody's going to get out of this. Maybe McMillan might. This is KDECRadio.com's coverage of the sectional wrestling tournament. Aaron Swenson, Dave Omdahl, glad you're with us. You're on KDECRadio.com here this afternoon. But they're way over on the edge of the mat, and sure enough, it's just finally called to the stalemate and brings them back center. Could have done that 20 seconds ago. Travis McMillan, the second seed, 42-1. Of the top half of the bracket, you get Tyler Johansson from uh, North Fayette Valley, 25 and 1. And here in the middle is uh, Jason Grover, the third seed. And Tyler Johansson, uh, eighth place two years ago at state, fifth place uh, last year at the state meet. And now we go out of bounds, there's the mat. Grover, a senior, McMillan from Olina, junior. Lampier with an escape on the far side. Lampier leading 8 0. Lampier was the conference champ. Uh, we could go in New Hampton, one of four conference champs, the most in school history for the Owain Huskies. Now we got a takedown by uh, Travis McMillan. Owain. Another takedown here for Lampier to make it 10 0 with one minute left here in the third period. Owain's got a couple of good big boys here. 
uh, between uh, Lamphere and McMillan. And uh, Travis McMillan, also a returning state qualifier for the Huskies. Yep. What do they got over 80 wins and a couple losses between these two kids? Not bad. Not bad. Very acceptable well, totals. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, 80, 80, 87, 87 and 2 going 87 going. and 2 between the two of them, yeah. Pretty good I'd love kid. to be in the uh, in the room watching these two kids battle on oh a day-by-day -day basis. It's bright. Yeah. Shades, shades of the uh, Fulsus and Fullhart boys and Larson, Larson's. 13-0 yeah. lead, now a 13-1 lead for Lampier on the farm mat over Trevor Trendy of Crestwood. And there we've got... Uh, McMillan coming up with uh, with an arm in the arm, a head in the armpit. Uh, McMillan, or, uh, Grover did a nice job of bellying out. Zach Lampier of Owen is going to win uh, by a 13 to 1 margin on Trevor Trendy. So Zach Lampier on to the finals at 195 for the Huskies. Yep. Grover coming up here, but uh, coming into a sit position, but uh, a lot of pressure on the backside. Now he comes under the arm. Trying to come up under, yeah, he can't. Grover, nice job of bellying out. And at the conclusion of this round, they will be taking a 15 minute break they just uh, announced. And, uh, so uh, we move on to, I believe. Uh, no. Travis, go ahead. Travis McMillan got a little bit high there trying to turn him and uh, Jason Grover slipped out of it and uh, came up on top for a, take, for a reversal. So it makes the score 2-2 two to two here. And uh, McMillan, dri or Grover drives him out of bounds. Underway in, seconds left in the second period. Underway in the uh, semis at 2.20. This is Dawson Reagan and Tyler Johansson of North Fayette. Johansson uh, with no common opponents. He didn't get a he got a late start. Uh, he was still uh, resting the body from football. He was a key contributor in the 2A state champion Tiger Hawk football team this year. But uh, Johansson ranked number four in the state. And we had Grover try to put a cradle on uh, McMillan and uh, slip to slip the cradle and McMillan come up on top. Makes it 4-2 now. With McMillan over uh, Jason Grover. And Travis McMillan ranked number five of the state, the junior for uh, North Bay for uh, Owain. But, you know, Grover just hanging in there and taking points when he can get them and trying not to give up any. And uh, that's how you that's how you win these matches against kids yep. who are actually better than you are. Uh, don't beat yourself. No, basically. don't beat yourself. Hang in there. Come up and, and uh, kids like Travis McMillan, obviously with a 42 on run record, uh, a, little bit of, uh, a little bit of wrestler. Kind of wants to be a little bit careful about letting the guy hang around. Oh, yeah. Because this is a situation where if he hang, lets him hang around, would happen to lose, he won't go to state. Yep. Because uh, you've got uh, Johansson up here on the other side of the bracket. It would take a minor miracle it would for take him to a do minor it. Miracle, that's right. As uh, Johansson has taken a two nothing lead, gets a takedown with 30 seconds left here in the second period at 220 pounds. Again, uh, through uh, 195, it's been all one and two seeds to this point. We're four to two with uh, McMillan ahead on the bottom now. Grover kind of comes out to the side. Now he comes up the legs. Uh, McMillan, he, he hangs on to one of uh, Grover's legs now. And, and uh, Grover's going to try to hang on to McMillan's leg to come up with a stalemate. That's what he's going to be looking for. Pulls the leg out to the side, might get it potentially dangerous. Doesn't get that. Still hanging on to the leg. And he's... And there he comes up on top. So still 4-2. Still Johansson leading 2 nothing as we go to the second period. And Johansson will start down in the second period on Dawson Reagan of Walk On. Well, Dawson Reagan sticking right there with him. Uh, Reagan, a 500 kid against uh, Johansson, who has only lost once this year. Now there we've got uh, Stalin call on McMillan on the bottom. Grover still hanging on on top. Trouble is he's got to make something out of it. He's behind the two. And we've got Grover trying to hook up an arm. Right. Johansson no. with the escape to make it 3-0 with 150 no. left in the second period. McMillan trying to stand up. Can't do it. Grover still hanging on. 
There you got McMillan turned into him, grabbed the leg. Makes it 6-2 right now. And uh, really nice job of turning into him, picking up, grabbing the ankle, putting his arm and shoulder right in the knee. And uh, now he's got McMillan, or Grover's arm up on behind his back, and time runs out, and we're going to win 6-2. Uh, Travis McMillan from O-Line moves on. Another two seed. Yep. But it wasn't easy. No, not at all. And he's considerably bigger than Grover. Grover is not, Grover is not a really big boy. Johansson now leading 3-0, uh, uh, 102 left here in the second period. Johansson, a two-time state place winner for the North Fayette Valley Tiger Hawks. I guess two two years ago they, it would have been only for the Hawks, not the Tiger Hawks, yeah, but nonetheless. Tiger Hawks now. The Valley, and we've got Ethan Lape from uh, North Fayette Valley against uh, Henry Horan uh, Olwein. Uh, Ethan, 23-2, uh, and two, a sophomore. And uh, quickly takes uh, Henry Horan Olwein down at the edge of the mat, lead 2-0. Ethan, the uh, and, uh, little brother of Dalton Lape, pretty good heavyweight for uh, North Fayette Valley. Yep, very good heavyweight. And a uh, little shorter than Henry Horan. Uh, Ethan, not terribly tall, but he's built like a barrel. He's just, he is stocky. And uh, riding Henry bad, uh, pretty hard here. Got him stretched out, uh, work, trying to work the head, trying to get uh, power half in. Henry moving pretty good on the bottom here. Kent didn't let him, uh, Lape get anything tied up. Johansson will go to the third period, leading by a six to nothing margin on Dawson Reagan of walk on. By the way, McMillan became the third finalist for Owen. And uh, here we've got uh, Lape coming under an arm. Henry Horan moving out to face him. Uh, Lape coming in with the front headlock to maintain control. They're going to go out of bounds here, and uh, surely they'll get the one. No, he isn't going to give it to him. I think there was a lot of control there, but they're bringing Henry Haram back down to the mat. And uh, oh. Hanson just uh, finished uh, the fall. And Joe we've Hansen got wins in 4:30, so he's on to the finals for North Bay Valley. And we've got uh, Ethan Lape up here with a with an arm up on the back, and he's got uh, Henry Horan on his back right now, and he wins by fall. So just one match uh, remaining here. As uh, Lape wins in a minute 24, Brett Bowers of Independence and Carter Zidlicki of Decora. And that'll be the second and third seed. And we'll hope it holds true again that the second seed can come through. And that'll be on the far mat. Getting ready to start right now. Uh, Carter Zidlicki, 19 and nine. Uh, Brett Bowers, eight and one. I think in Indy's had several kids wrestling heavyweight. It's like Bowers, the uh, senior, gets the uh, nod here for sectionals. Comes in with an eight and one record. And Carter, of course, only uh, got to the heavyweight end of things uh, just a couple weeks ago, really. Yeah, he's actually a 220-pounder. And uh, so Bauer is a little bit bigger. But looking at that 220 uh, bracket, yeah, this, this is the place is a, to go. <laughs> this is the this place, is the place to, go, to yeah. go if you want to continue your season past today. So Ethan Lape, uh, his uh, victory will put five of the finals for North Fayette. Crestwood has seven in the finals. Decora with five. Independence with six. Owine with three. Walk on with one. And we'll see what happens in this match. 112 left here in the first period, a 0-0 score between Carter Zidlicki and Brent Bowers. Bowers. Zidlicki was the Northeast Iowa Conference heavyweight champ a week ago. Now, Bowers a little taller, he got a head head tie now, but he's been using double underhooks. Uh, Carter got to move him around a little bit, shoot to the outside. Bowers a tall heavyweight. No scores, they go out of bounds with 51 seconds left here in the period. Bauer is probably one of the nicest built heavyweights here in this bracket, and then he's not he's not uh, not not a chubby boy at all. He's big. Now nice nice double, nice double, nice double. head outside double. Bauer's gonna try to roll him through, but he can't do it, and Billy's out, and Trav and uh, Carter has the uh, 
Take down. Carter trying to work. Uh, uh, wrist trying to get a wrist through. Uh, Bowers uh, based out. And uh, Carter looking for uh, looking for a cradle. Now he comes back up. Looking to ride the wrist. Riding the wrist hard, coming through the crotch. Now they go out of bounds. And they come back to the center of the mat. Bowers down. That was a beautiful double leg on the part of uh, Carter. Head out to the head to the outside, knees kept moving. Just like the coaches told him to. And uh, now he's working a spiral ride. Hand in the crotch. Now he moves back to the outside looking for a ball and chain. A lot of shoulder pressure. Now he goes to the wrist on the far side. And uh, time's up. End of the first period. Carter's choice, he defers. Bauer's going down. A 2 nothing lead for Carter Zidlicki as we go to period number two. Zidlicki trying to become the sixth finalist for the Cora Vikings. And uh, Bowers moves to a set position. A lot of Carter, or Carter putting a lot of pressure on top. A lot of pressure on the shoulders. Got uh, Bowers extended now. Up working the working the arms, trying to get a wrist behind the back. Mike comes in through the crotch, forces him back down. Working real hard on top. Trying to make uh, Bowers uh, more afraid of getting pinned than, than uh, thinking about getting an escape. Now he comes up, picks up an ankle, drives him down, still got him flat. Not giving him any chance to react or move. Doing a good job on top. Doing a good job. Working to get an arm up on the back. Has, no, hasn't let, hasn't let Bowers get to his knees at all. Just keeps driving on top. And uh, working really, really hard. Trying to get an arm, get something through, get him to his back. It's gonna be hard to get back points through. He just really just, he just, he just keep trying to stay on his belly is what he's trying to do. So anyway, good job, 40 seconds left. And we get a stalling call on the guy on the bottom, Bowers. And uh, Zilliki trying to hook up tilt uh, through the crotch area. Wasn't able to do that, but yeah. Carter's been pretty active on top. He's been very active on top, very active on top. and. Uh, Again, that's one of those stalling calls I hate to see. I just yep. as soon see him laying down there as long as he's. Uh, I'm sure that's what the, the Independence coach has been hollering at him to get to get to his build a base and get out of there. And uh, anyway, he hasn't been able to do it yet. Any uh, and uh, Carter's been doing a really good job of staying on top, kind of over the leg right now. Now he moves off over the leg to the arm as he go out of bounds with one 1.8 seconds left. 2-0 Zidlicki as we're almost at the end of the second period. Carter trying to become the sixth finalist for Decora. If uh, you. Bowers comes back, he would be the seventh finalist for Independence. Again, it's uh, been all one in two seeds to this point. And end of the period. And uh, Travis up 2-0, and I think he's going to go down. Yep. So he starts the down position. Now you got to be a little careful with this Bowers kid. I think he could cradle. He's got the length. Yep. And the Carter, good job up to his feet. Uh, turns, and he's got the escape. Goes right in nice. on the legs. Nice on the legs. Nice reshot, and he's got two more for take. Now that's the way you want to do it. And that's uh, the difference uh, between Carter Zidlicki in years past and Carter Zidlicki oh, this yeah. year. Oh, he's so much better this year. If Independence gave an award for most improved wrestlers, it would have to be to Carter Zidlicki. I mean, yeah. he has or to just, Cora, for that matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Can't give it. To, can't give it to uh, Philip. Oh, yeah. Philip Eddie because he's new this year. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but but uh, uh, Carter is just <laughs> grown by leaps and bounds. Yeah, oh, he has. It's been fun to watch him mature and change. You know, he was just a fair heavyweight last year, or fair kid last year. Yeah. He's he's wrestling really well this year. A five nothing lead for Carter Zidlicki here. And uh, riding tough on top, just like last period. But really got the hammer down. Trying to get an arm up on uh, Bauer's back. And uh, oh, he's got he's got an arm there. Now he's going to try to get around the head. 
Uh, 50 seconds left here in the period. Bauer's doing a good job of turning the hips away from him, so makes it hard to go over. Now, now he's got the he's flat on the flat on his belly, but he doesn't have he doesn't have. Now he's got now he's taking him over. He's getting over around the head. He's coming. He's got back points. He's got back points. He's coming. He's over the head now. Nice, nice covered covered nicely, and he got the fall. Nice. Carter so. Zidlicki with a fall in 532 over Brett Bowers, and he becomes the sixth finalist today for the Itacora Vikings. So having a good day. All in all, a pretty good round. Uh, the Vikings are going to be in fourth place right now uh, with those six points. Uh, Carter just got him here. Team-wise, it's Independence with 164, North Fayette Valley with 145 and a half, Crestwood in third with 137, Owine fourth with 121, or actually Decorah now fourth with 126, Owine fifth with 121, Walk on in sixth with 90 points. We're going to take about a 15-minute break here, and we'll be back with uh, more. i tell you what, uh, we'll be back right around 2.40 or so with more wrestling action from the sectional wrestling tournament here in West Union on KDEC Radio.com.